dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang clear the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave Thank you, Sheree. And we are live with you here from Pensacola, Florida, Blue Wahoo Stadium by Pensacola Bay. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith, UWF football here on Your View Florida, Cox Sports TV, and ESPN Pensacola 99.1 FM, 1330 AM simulcast. Jamie, this is it, man. Regular season finale. We're at home. It is salute to service day. It's hard not to be pumped up. We have already witnessed some incredible things here, not just that national anthem by Serena Narcisco, but outside the stadium, military things on display all day. Uh, they've been giving people rides around and, and dune buggies and military vehicles. Uh, great tailgate out there today. And then here in the stadium just a few minutes ago, we'll try to get that queued up for you here in a second. Uh, the game ball was delivered by the Golden Knights, the U.S. Army paratrooper team. Just dropped right in here to the stadium right after senior day, right after we acknowledged the 27 UWF seniors and brought the game ball to the field. We've got a little longer, uh, 4.08 is the official time for the kickoff, but we're excited for this one, partner. It's exciting. I mean, regular season finale, uh, but it kind of feels like a playoff game uh, against these two teams. West Alabama and UWF are going to go at it today. And uh, I'll say it again, we said it on the radio broadcast earlier, but this is going to be a tough game. And, and you said it also, Will, you don't know what kind of team you're going to get in West Alabama that comes out and plays today. So this is going to be an important uh, important game for both sides as West Alabama is kind of playing for next year a little bit, but UWF playing for a lot more kind of has to win to get in. Argos come in 7-2, and two, the Tigers 6-4, and four, but UWF with that 6-1 and one conference mark is still playing for a spot in the playoffs, uh, sitting at 6th in the most rec recent regional rankings. And, and so you have a situation where if you win, you control your own destiny. If you lose, you're going to have to have a bunch of other things happen. So it's all about winning this afternoon, this evening. For West Al, they'd love to spoil the party and, you know, kind of return a favor that this Argo team did to them in the 2017 playoffs. So a lot of great storylines here. We've got some cool things on the broadcast for you, too. Josh Sitton, who played in the NFL, is from Pensacola Catholic High, played for the U University of Central Florida, won a Super Bowl with the Green Bay Packers, played with the Bears and the Dolphins as well. He's here. He's going to join us for a little bit here in the first half. And we are saluting service. And most importantly, we're looking for an Argo win this afternoon. Jamie, what are the, what are the kind of the keys to this game? Well, I think for one, and um, I said it in previous week, but this offense has to get going. Uh, slow start last week up in Valdosta State. They have to come out, start fast, and I believe if they come out and start fast, that's going to jump them and jump start them into the postseason also. And another thing, Quay Boyd, that tight end for West Alabama, uh, NFL-type prospect, about 6'5", 6'6", 250, a big guy who can go up and get it and they're going to have to find a way to take him out of the game and make West Alabama try and beat you elsewhere. You like, though, as good as he is, uh, Quay Boyd, the fact that now if you're the University of West Florida, your coach Darian Dula, the defensive coordinator, head coach Pete Shinnick, you've got some linebackers that can match up with a guy like that, an NFL-type kid at tight end. 
in your Gael Laurents, in your Kedrick Bradleys, your DeMarco DJ Artises, they are, they have that size. And that hasn't been something that's been at linebacker for these Argos before. Right, and this is a, a completely new team, a different team from those pre previous three years that West Florida has played at West Alabama. A lot deeper on defense, uh, better athletes, I would say, on defense as well. So we'll see how they come out and kind of implement those defensive strategies here and there. Uh, and we'll see if they can uh, get after it, get after Quay Boyd and that quarterback today for West Alabama. Two teams getting set to run out here, but I can tell you there's a couple injury notes we want to pass along. We told uh, the radio audience a, a little earlier in our pregame show, but let's, let's give it to everybody again. No Sherrod Oliver, your number one corner, number eight. He's out, banged up a little bit, and then you've lost Javon Newton, one of your running backs. I think your second leading rusher, in fact. Uh, he took a hard hit against Valdosta last week. He's not ready to go yet. And then Josh Smiley, linebacker, key part of your linebacking core, he was just honored with the seniors, the 27 or 28 seniors that were honored pregame. He's got a shoulder sling on. He's done for the rest of the season having some surgery. So you've got a couple key guys missing. The beauty of that is, is this is a team with a lot of depth, and we've touched on that all season. It, it is next man up, and, and it's going to be big to kind of have some guys step into those roles. We'll take a quick break here before the te teams come out and get you ready when we come back for kickoff. You are watching and listening to UWF football right here on the UWF Sports Network. I'm really hungry, but I don't want to spend a fortune. Well, you're in luck. Now you can get Denny's Super Slam with two eggs, two bacon strips, two sausage links, hash browns, and two pancakes, all for just $5.99. That is a great deal. So I get all of that for just $5.99? Sure do. Wow, this meal just keeps getting better and better. Some might say super. I see what you did there. The $5.99 Super Slam is back. See you at Denny's. Limited time only. Price and participation may vary. No substitutions. Get your vehicle ready for holiday road trips with these Pensacola Honda service specials. Save $10 on a lube, oil, and filter change, brake inspection, top-off fluids, multi-point inspection, and complimentary car wash, only $44.95. Pensacola Honda's tire rotation, tire balance, and alignment, all for $139. And engine air filter and cabin filter replacement, only $99.95. PensacolaHonda.com or Pensacola Boulevard at W Street. Pensacola Honda, home of the one price, low price guarantee. We are back with you here, Blue Wahoo Stadium, Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith. Simulcast for UWF football hosting West Alabama here on Your View Florida, Cox Sports TV, and with our radio partner ESPN Pensacola as well. The two teams are out for the coin flip. Again, salute to service day. The, the commanding officer here at Pensacola NAS in, in attendance today out there for the coin flip honorary captain. And then we've got a ton of other military dignitaries in the house. And, and Jamie, this, this is a big one. Part of... Uh, Final week of the regular season before the D2 playoffs kick in. The selection show comes at 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. All eyes will be on that. There are eight of the nine GSC teams in action here today, including this football game, which is a 4 o'clock kick. I can already tell you Florida Tech beat Shorter 42-3 to in an earlier game. And this is a big one. Mississippi College, who West Alabama beat pretty handily 35-21 last week, is beating Delta State right now over in Clinton in the fourth quarter, 37 to 13 Delta State with a win and kind of put themselves in a position where they might make the playoffs and give a third GSC team it looks like that's going by the window so a little bit of that final week of the regular season chaos we don't want to see any of that nonsense here no uh, you're hoping you're hoping that UWF comes out and uh, and hopefully decides it by halftime but uh, we've seen we've, we've been on the both sides <laughs> on the both ends of the spectrum but uh, I'm not, I, and I'm sure you aren't, Will, but I'm not looking for a close ball game here today as we head into the postseason. Let's take care of that business, right? The Argos will, will receive the kick here. I believe uh, West Alabama won and deferred to the second half, so you go on offense to get things started. And as we wait the kickoff, this Argonaut offense has been really good. 33.9 points, almost 34 points per game. They're averaging a little south of 385 total yards per game. They run it well at almost 150, and they throw it well at better than 230 yards per game. So look for them, and Jamie mentioned a fast start. Can you get out there with this offense? Can you drive down the field? We've seen that before where they've, hey, they've opened with a good drive, and then we've seen games where they haven't, and then we've seen games with Florida Tech, for example. Pete Shinnick referenced this on our pregame radio show where they drove down, drove the field, and threw an interception. So 
perfect world. You get, you get the ball, you go down, you score a touchdown. It could be a long drive, a short drive, but you just want points on the board. Exactly, and you hope Austin Reed comes out and has an impressive first drive because we've seen him where he comes out and throws that first, first drive pick. We're already seeing something different here, Jamie. Back to return the kick, Shamari Mason. Usually this is Marcus Clayton. I believe this is the first kickoff that Shamari's going to return this year. Mason takes it at his 10, out across the 20, out across the 30. Big return. And that's the way you want to start the game, just outside in the 35, and they'll start in really good field position for this UWF offense. Austin Reed, of course, the quarterback, probably the GSC freshman of the year. You see it there. He is just a little south of 2,000 yards, 19 touchdowns, seven interceptions, completion percentage. One of you might want to bring that up just a touch, but he's got the arm to do it. He's certainly got the receiving weapons out there with him. Rodney Coates, Kevin Grant, Tate Latio. If they run a tight end, it is Jacuri Jackson. And starting the game will be Anthony Johnson at running back. I wasn't sure who would get the start here today. We'll set the offensive line for you after we get underway. So ball at the 34. Reed looking to throw. He's got a man. There's a quick strike on first down. Good positive yards as he finds Coates over in the flat. Yeah, they motion Coates from the boundary to the field. That way, giving him a little bit more room to work with on that comeback route. Coates makes a nice catch. Looks like he'll get about six on that play. It'll bring up second and about four. So, yeah, get, they're going to give him five. It looks like officially on our scoreboard here. That'll get you going with a second five. Very manageable. Always wanting to try to play in front of the sticks if you can. Check at the line of scrimmage. We'll move Quentin Randolph, who's in the game now, across the line. Three receivers out to the right. They're going to go handoff to Johnson. Johnson makes the first man miss. Kind of plows into Sam Antoine over at left tackle. Picks up a couple. Looks like he'll be a little short of the first down, probably bringing up a third and two. Across the front, it is the left tackle, number 52, Sam Antoine. Number 61 is the left guard, Joe Wintrick. The center, Devin Gibson, number 65. All three of those seniors. Right guard, big Mike Dilla, 6'5", 335, number 74. And the right tackle is number 50, Jacob Bruce, a red shirt freshman. So here you go, third and one officially. And they go to Mason in the middle of the line. He takes the first bump, keeps the legs moving. He'll move the chains with a first down run up the middle. Yeah, I like that play call there, getting Mason the ball early on the inside handoff. Good push on that right side of the line there. Bruce, and uh, I believe that's Big Dilla over there. But nice push, gives, gives Shamar Mason the first down. That's what you want, move those chains and kind of get the offense up and running. By the way, it was a 27-yard kickoff return for Shamari Mason. Nice job, and I think you know Coach Shinnick wanting to get his offense jump started. That's a way to do it. Put the kid out there to return the kick. Mason stays in at running back, takes the handoff, and you see the feet there in the hole, dancing from right to left, finding some linemen to get behind. He'll pick up some positive yards on first down. And if you watch NFL football at all, Shamari Mason, he makes those jump cuts kind of like a Le'Veon Bell type back who has that patience, and when he does, he hits the hole hard. That way, or that play, not a lot of running room, picks up about four on that play. They give him three officially. I think it was four for Johnson on one carry, four for Mason the next to get the first down, and now three, and they'll bring Anthony Johnson back into the game. So it looks like a rotation with Javon Newton out of Johnson and Mason. Sometimes this staff will go with one back on a drive to start, but it looks like we're going to rotate. They roll Reed out to his right. He finds Tate Latio in the flat. The throw kind of led him into the defensive back, but he's able to pick up yards, and looks like he'll be a yard or two short of the first down as the Argos have crossed into West Alabama territory. Yeah, I think he's going to be about three yards short there, but they get Austin Reed on a sprint out to the right. Taylor Tio runs an out route, a quick out route, just not enough to move the sticks on that play. We'll see if they can get it done on third and fourth. That'll bring up a third and short, and again, if you're, if you're operating on – the third and four, third and three. We just saw a third and one. You're setting your offense up to be able to be multifaceted and either throw or run, depending on the play call. And Coach Shinnick's got a bunch of them over there. This one looks like a nice, easy pass, and they were working on this in pregame. Look at the jump by Quentin Randolph. We're so used to seeing that that we may take it for granted, but the kid makes incredible plays time in and time out. And, yeah, Quentin Randolph's a hoop guy in high school also and goes up on that play and proves it. Has man coverage over there. And this is an NFL-type throw of your Back shoulder, reading. beautiful. Back shoulder throw. Randolph does the rest, and the Argos are moving. Eating up yardage. That's the first big play here, really. And, and I was down on the field before the game, Jamie, and that the receiving core runs the, a drill where they just throw it up in the air with a guy right beside you, and you go up and get it. You see it pay off right there. Ball at the 27 of West Al, first and 10. Reed with plenty of time. This offensive line has been great. He's got all day. He chunks it into the end zone. Touchdown catch. 
Quentin Randolph, we just said it. He goes up and gets another one. Q, you're my boy. And Austin Reed just all day to throw the ball there. And when you give him that much time, you give receivers like Randolph and the, and the other receiving core just plenty of time to run downfield. Randolph in man coverage again and makes a heck of a catch over the defender there. Look at this replay, just sensational. And really all day to throw, great ball. And Randolph was up already. He was at the top of his jump, makes the catch. You got to love it. 27-yard touchdown throw and catch. Austin Williams on for the extra point attempt. The snap is good. Hold is good. The kick is up. And it is true and into the bay. Argos with an impressive opening drive as they lead this game 7 to nothing over West Alabama. You're watching and listening to UWF football right here on the UWF Sports Network. University of West Florida Argonaut football on your view is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. It's not just the capital city, but the hub of all things Louisiana. And by Can Air Federal Credit Union, enhancing lives through exceptional service, strength, and financial solutions. For more college and high school football coverage, check out yourview.com. of Bud Light, Crisp Code, Football Edition. This is how you say, game tonight, bring Bud Light. Fantasy fees are due. That's it for today. Brewed with no corn syrup, Bud Light, Crisp. Enjoy responsibly. Bud Light Beer, Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Welcome back into Blue Wahoo Stadium by scenic Pensacola Bay. Look at that shot right there. Sun starting to sink in the sky and a red hot opening drive for this UWF Argonaut offense. Jamie, they go right down the field. Seven plays, 66 yards, 27 yard touchdown throw from Austin Reed to Quentin Randolph and they take 353 off the clock. We said they needed a fast start and they got one. Exactly. I mean, what a what a great drive. That may have been Austin Reed's best drive of the season so far. I would say he was coming out and he come he came out look precision sharp. And how about the running backs also, J Johnson and Shamari Mason, the guy your man, established a little bit of everything. You know, showed you a little power running game and ability to move the, the chains with you know possession on the run, and then a couple good throws, one to Randolph, or two to Randolph, one to Tate Latia. Of course, the touchdown catch. I thought Quentin Randolph. We've seen this, his athleticism. That offensive line, though, got to shout them out. I think they've only given up 10 sacks this season. Literally, Austin Reed could have held that ball longer if he wanted to on the touchdown throw, and he held it for at least five, six seconds, and that's an eternity in football. Austin Williams with the kick. This one goes deep. It is fielded inside the five, and the return is on, but a nice job getting down there and chopping down the return, man by this UWF special teams unit. They do a good job of coverage at half, and that was Corey Proctor on the return for the Tigers. And now West Alabama comes out and gets their shot, and we'll see how this defense chooses to attack. Last week in the first half, Valdosta kind of had an answer as we brought pressure early in that ball game. We'll see if West Alabama comes out and and has an answer for this this tough Argo or tough Argo defense. This drive will start at the 25 for West Alabama, and yeah, Darian Doolin, the defensive coordinator for UWF, very aggressive in his scheming and his play calling. Likes to bring a lot of blitz. Jack McDaniel's is the quarterback. Number seven takes the snap. He's got a quick out. Finds one of his receivers over on the side. That is number 89, Bailey Blanchard, with the catch. A good throw and catch. And this is an offense that as they move the chains with a first down. They'll run it. They'll throw it. Uh, we talked on the radio pregame. Derek Underwood, number three. Number 28, James Smith, the running backs that you have to look out for. They, they both are around 500 yards on the season. They're a dangerous offensive unit right now. Three receivers out to the left of McDaniels. 
First down ball at the 40 now, so give him a gain of 15 on the last play. They'll go run, testing the middle of this UWF line. Chandler Ferguson is in there for the tackle, along with the big fella, Miles Meyer, getting up off the pile there. And we can do starters for the defense, <laughs> but with this UWF defense, you've just got so many guys rotating in and out. Normally, the ends are Matthew Gotell, number 90, number 99, Ian Bush, and Daryl Wilson, our friend, Big fellow up front, but you're already seeing Miles Meyer, who is really third on the depth chart, but he's in there at nose tackle right away. Short gain on first down for two. Second and eight is it, and they'll go back outside to, to Blanchard. He makes the first guy miss. And you see a Marcus Clayton, number three, who does start at corner, but he doesn't have Sherrod Oliver over on the other side, so it's a little bit different as far as who, you know, who your top corner is, and they may test uh, these corners of UWF. I see Demarie Givens. He's actually shifted over to play the corner spot on the right side of the field that normally would be Sherrod Oliver, who is out for this game. Duncombe, Kedrick Bradley, Andre Duncombe, and Chandler Ferguson are your linebackers. They go back again, and it looks like, Jamie, they're going to go after Marcus Clayton over here at this left corner. Yeah, again, they go to Blanchard over there in man coverage on Marcus Clayton. Clayton, that time, I saw him slip as he tried to plant that right foot in the ground, and Blanchard takes advantage of it, and... They have are really close to a first down, about second and one here. Yeah, they got to pick up a, a gain of about seven on that play. Big run in the middle, finding a, a gash in the middle of this defensive line, and that is Derek Underwood picking up positive yardage. Down inside the UWF red zone, that carry will put the ball at the 19. Underwood finds some space in there, and West Alabama goes tempo here. 19 yards on the carry. Here we go. This is an offense that's been pretty good inside the red zone. This play, it, at least initially, isn't going anywhere. Looked like Ty Cox got on the outside, got a hold of the jersey, able to slow up Underwood enough to let some of his teammates get there. This is a team offensively that has scored 80, about 84% of the time they get inside the red zone, about 75% of those touchdowns. So very efficient West Alabama when they get down in this part of the field. No gain brings up a second and 10. I got a lot of numbers. I'm going to try to work them all in this game. McDaniels to throw. He's got a man in the middle. The defenders get there. They run into each other. That was Clayton at this corner position. And then coming over to help out was Henry Montgomery. They get to the football. They break up the pass. And really, if they don't collide, somebody may pick that ball off. Yeah, great defense that time. You, you, you're glad they're okay after the collision there. But awesome job by Montgomery out of that safety position to recognize the post route being run by Blanchard and get a hand on that. The other side of the coin, this UWF defense only gives up about 50% scores inside the red zone, and even stingier than that, only six touchdowns have been scored on this defense inside the red zone all season out of 21 times. Third and 10, man in the middle, he catches it, and West Alabama wins the battle of red zone offense against red zone defense. Nice catch by Christian Salisbury on the 19-yard touchdown strike. Yeah, it looks like Salisbury at 5'8". They sneak him out of that slot position, and that's a mismatch as you have Kendrick Bradley, the graduate linebacker, covering him, just not able to, uh, to cover Salisbury. He has about two or three steps on him. They get the touchdown there. Runs away from him there. Salisbury just 5'8", 188. You see it, he, Jamie hit the nail on the head, finds the spot in the zone. Snap is good, the kick is up, and it is good. We are tied up at sevens in this ball game. Argonauts and the Tigers all leaving. 827 left to play here in the first quarter. We'll take a break with the two teams on the UWS Sports Network. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. That's my wife. In this journey, we all have a role. Every life counts on you 
knowing yours. Alert today, alive tomorrow, because safety doesn't happen by accident. Back with you here at Blue Wahoo Stadium in Pensacola, Florida. There's a summary of the West Alabama scoring drive. Eight plays, 75 yards, 240 off the clock. It is a 19-yard touchdown pass from Jack McDaniels to Christian Salisbury that evens this game up. So it's game on. Jamie Smith, both offenses look hot early. Yeah, great job by West Alabama at that time, led by Jack McDaniels. Had a couple great throws. And uh, Bailey Blanchard looks like there's going to be his key receiver going forward. Yeah, definitely working the... Marcus Clayton side of the field, and then they found some action in the middle of the field. This kick is inside the 10. Shamari Mason looking for another return. Directional kick. He finds a seam. He hits the hole outside of the 35 again, and about the 37 before he's knocked out of bounds. And that was really maybe the last man with a chance to get to him. If he could have gotten past that, it was off to the races. And UWF has started both these last two drives are going to be starting past the 30-yard line. And credit to Shamari Mason. He's, man, he's like a lightning in a bottle able to just see a hole hit it, and, and you said it, Will. If he gets past that uh, last defender, he's probably in the end zone here for six. The kid is dangerous, no doubt about it. This drive will start at the 38, the official spot, so back on offense. Something we haven't seen, it looks like we're going to start with two men in the backfield, although I'm sure we may see somebody go in motion out of this set. Looks like Anthony Manning. Yeah, Anthony Manning is in the game number 16 with Anthony Johnson in the backfield. And there's flags flying before. We'll set the defense for you while we await the call here from the official. West Florida, that's their first timeout of the half. Well, that's a quick timeout. So something they didn't like, obviously, there. And I think the clock was ticking down also. Uh, the clock was winding down. Let me set the West Alabama defense for you. Terrence Jones, number nine at one end. Andreas Lilly, number 54, at a defensive tackle. Camarcus Williams is your nose tackle. Jordan Jones is the guy to watch for, number seven. At the other defensive end, 59 total tackles, 12 and a half for loss, four and a half sacks. He's forcing fumbles, recovering fumbles. He's the kid that we've seen the last couple weeks. Every team's got one in this conference, an NFL-ready kind of guy. Number four, Mike Anderson. Number two, Corey Proctor. Number 21, Josh Hatcher at linebacker. Xavier Williamson, number six. Trey Elston, number 27 under your corners. Your safeties are number eight, Jeremiah Boyd. And number one, Tavarius Hutchinson. There's your West Alabama defense. Here we go now. After the timeout, first and 10 from the 38th. Johnson with the carry. Big hole on the right side, but a nice job of stepping in to that gap and grabbing a hold of some ankles and holding on for dear life. Getting up off the pile, number 27, Trey Elston. And West Alabama going cover one on that play, putting more guys in the box that time, but didn't really matter as Anthony Johnson picked up about five on that carry. Let's give him five, call it second and five here. Another good, positive play on a first down for this UWF offense. Here we go. Two receivers out to the left of Austin Reed. Karan Ashley is single on the other side. Tate Latio with a catch. Room in the middle of the field. Nice block on the outside from Kevin Grant. Latio still running. He's got the first down and then some ball comes out. Karan Ashley's Johnny on the spot to pick it up. Not sure if he was down or not, though when that ball came loose, but either way, first down and a big gainer into West Alabama territory. Love to see these receivers block. Look at big Kevin Grant. Great job that time by Austin Reed. They had Trey Elston, the defensive back, coming in on the blitz, and they teach wherever the blitz comes, that's where you want to throw it to, and he sneaks it right over his head to graduate receiver Tate Latio and picks up another first down. And even though we're on TV, there are no replays. That was clearly that Tate Latio was down sitting on the ground, but you never know at this level, and if they don't call it that way, it would have been a live ball. Reed has a man in the flat. Latio again, enough for another first down. Another great throw, and you see that arm strength, Jamie, from Austin Reed, able to put that football from the middle of the field out onto those numbers in a hurry. That's an NFL-type throw from one, one hash mark to the opposite side on the field. Great throw on the money. Take Latio get some yards after the catch on that play as well and the Argos picking up right where they left off last drive. Gave him about 12 there on that one, 19 on the previous play, so two big catches in a row. 
first downs for Tate Latio from Austin Reed. Here we go. Ball at the 26. Jaden Gardner gets his first touch of the game into the line, testing that right side. A helmet comes flying off. We don't want to get in any helmet situations with the way football's going these days. <laughs> but Gardner's going to pick up a couple yards on first down. Yeah, great job there by Gardner. I thought he was initially stopped at the line of scrimmage, yeah, but they do call him turbo. He's able to jump cut and pick up maybe a yard or two on that running play. He made number 94, John Michael Edwards, look silly there in the open field. They're going to give him one officially, so second and nine. You know, we, we say a long or a short one. This is a it's a long one, but one nonetheless. Here you go, three receivers out to the left side. It is Shamari Mason, the back off the right shoulder of Austin Reed, the quarterback. Clean pocket again. Good throw to the outside. Karan Ashley with the catch, and that's going to be another UWF first down. Jamie, what I like so far is we saw some drops last week that really hurt this offense early on. Everybody's catching the football early. And you like to see Karan Ashley. He had a key drop late in that ball game last week of getting felled off the state. Glad to see Austin Reed still has that confidence to go in to Ashley. Great to see him pick up the first down there. So ball now inside the red zone at the 13. 12 yards on the first down catch for Karan Ashley. This drive continues for the Argonauts. All offense early on. Reed takes a snap, designed running play. He's looking for some room in the middle of the field, makes a man miss before he's finally brought down from behind by Terrence Jones. But I like that. There's a, We haven't seen much of that in a little while. We Early in the season, Jamie, you and I were so impressed with the way that Austin Reed can run the football, his physicality. You see it here just dancing behind his line, stops and starts, jumps over some guys. Yeah, and that's just 11-on-11 11 11 football there. I mean, you're giving basically on a hat on a hat. And Austin Reed has numbers and blockers out in front, able to pick up a couple yards there. Nice little run there by Austin Reed. Gain of three brings up second and seven from the 10-yard line. Reed with six rushing touchdowns this season. They'll go back into the line. Gardner again, he's going to get it, get it cranked up and pick up about five. Nice run there by Gardner. Reed chooses to give it to Gardner on that option play. Inside handoff. Gardner able to take a couple hits on that play. And just outside, maybe on the five-yard line, it'll bring up third and two. Third and a short two, and I like this. I mean, we were missing Javon Newton. Unfortunately for Javon, took a hard shot last week. A kid who has three touchdowns, 370 yards on the season, so you're missing a big chunk of your running game, but you, now you've got the three guys, and this is the benefit of having four solid running backs. You're really not missing your beat. Austin Reed with the keep, and he's in for the touchdown. Ball comes loose. And we'll see what the call is, but you got to assume he was across the goal line before the ball came out. Yet, and that, they're going to call it a touchdown. Arms are in the air. I, 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 there's no way that he didn't stick the ball out for the touchdown first. And it actually, it looked like the ground caused the fumble. We just talked about Austin Reed and his physical running. We'll give him five yards on the or three yards on the touchdown there. And Sam Antoine looks like he comes out the bottom <laughs> of that pile with the football. Well, let's give let's give it to him for recovery. Big Sam Antoine on it on Senior Day. Five yards, I think, officially will be the touchdown run, although Antoine may get it with the uh, fumble recovery. Either way, another impressive drive for this Argos offense as we await the extra point. Austin Williams on, Dawson Hamlin to hold. We're going to wave some arms and hold up play before we kick this thing. Not quite sure what this is here, our officiating crew. But, I, you know, I can't say – how much I am impressed with what we're seeing, both running and throwing. This offense very balanced for UWF on the first two possessions. This may be an arena football-esque game at the pace we're going. Snap is good, hold is good. The kick is pulled a little, but it's banged through. And into the bay once again, Austin Williams makes it a seven-point lead for the Argos. 14-7 our score, 4-11 left here in the first quarter. You're watching and listening to Argo Football on the UWF Sports Network. For those who sweat in determined pursuit, and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile, and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Hey, who are you? Oh, hey, Jeff, I'm a car thief. What? I'm here to steal your car because, well, that's my job. What? 
What? What? What? What? What? What? <laughs> it happens. So get off stage. I'd be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. In Pensacola, call Melissa Keener. Real change occurs in that split second. A moment of connection among people. Change is inclusive. Change is collaborative. Change is transformative. Change connects. Who will you connect with? What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. On Davis Highway. Welcome back here, Blue Wahoo Stadium in Pensacola, Florida. There's your drive summary. Three drives, three scores. This one, eight plays, 62 yards, 416 off the clock. It is a touchdown run by Austin Reed. A fumble, though, recovered by Sam Antoine, your big left tackle. So I don't know who gets the touchdown there, one way or another. Forced fumble by Josh Hatcher. Although I, I wonder if Austin didn't have that ball across the line. This ball is getting kicked from the 50. Do we have a penalty? I think it may have been a personal, oh, yeah, personal yeah, conduct. Extra point, but it, yeah, personal foul. Is, and they're going pooch kick. Has to be fair caught. That's a that's a great way to do it right there. Take advantage of that. You could bang that out in the back of the end zone and give them the 25 instead. Start them a little deeper in their own end. So heads up, special teams play coach Kyle Shoemaker, who, by the way, has an incredible beard. If you were wondering, if you ever see on uh, down there on the sidelines, you're like, who's the dude with the beard? That's coach Kyle Shoemaker. Here we go, 14-7 our score, 4-11 left to play. The rest of this offense, they went so quickly down the field last time. Up front is left tackle Cornelius Rogers, 6'4", 272. Joe Oliver is your left guard, 6'4", 320. Cal Dyer, the center, 6'4", 330. Fabian Jones, 6'2", 331 at right guard. And the right tackle, Brandon Anderson, 6'3", 315. They are big up front, this West Alabama team, as they run on first down. Whistles blow, Underwood. Not much room to operate in. Yeah, West Alabama has some beef on that O-line. A lot of big boys. Kind of similar <laughs> to what we saw last week against Valdosta Yeah, State. Valdosta had the height, too. They look like a basketball team across the front. Your wide receivers, number eight, Tariq Martin. Bailey Blanchard, number 89, who we already saw on that first drive a few times. And then Christian Salisbury caught the touchdown. Quay Boyd, the big tight end that Jamie's mentioned, number 18. You look for him as they run here. And Underwood's got plenty of room to operate finally. Coming over is DeAnthony Bell, along with Henry Montgomery, to get him to the ground. But that's a big gainer on second down. And another explosive run there by Underwood. He had one in that other drive also. Able to sneak out, get past Kendrick Bradley there, who tries to make the tackle and picks up a huge gain. They'll give him 24 on that. Yeah, that's a big gainer. Moving the ball into UWF territory just across the 50 ball. Officially spotted at the 47. Huge play. Back to the running game again. This time, Hats get in there in a hurry and put the ball carrier to the ground. Nice job by this defense. Yeah, Anthony, or Manning comes in at the end. Or sorry, Anthony Bell comes in and finishes off Underwood at the end of that tackle. As he wanted to go bounce it out, looked like again. Bell says no, yeah. not this time. Good, good push up front. I see Brandon Pennerton, number 51, in there with his arms wrapped around the ball carrier as well. Second down and eight, short gain of two on first down. Here we go. Actually, that wasn't across the 50 yet, was it? Or was it? Oh, they marked it. The, well, they just moved the scoreboard for me. It's 46 now. Here we go. This one bounced to the outside. Can somebody get up there and make a tackle? It's going to be up near first down yardage. And you see the effectiveness of this West Alabama running game, especially with Derek Underwood, his ability to bounce it to the outside and make something happen. So he's going to pick up about six, yeah. seven. No, they're going to give him the first down. They'll give him all eight. Yeah, Underwood just following his big O-line on that play. You can see him pushing blockers out in front, trying to navigate his way through, and he gets just enough for that first down there. So here you go, ball at the 37 now. Another effective drive, at least to this point, for this West Alabama offense. Both teams really clicking with the football on offense. McDaniels fakes it, goes back to pass. He's got Salisbury in the middle of the field. And, Jamie, you know, we saw against North Greenville a couple weeks ago, this, the turf here was a little slippery. They're kind of flying up at some spots. We've already seen Marcus Clayton on the outside with some loose footing. And right there, Christian Salisbury is open. If he doesn't lose his footing, that might have been another touchdown. Yeah, Christian Salisbury beat 
uh, his man off the line, Henry Montgomery. And Montgomery was fortunate enough that Salisbury slipped because uh, McDaniels, the quarterback, made the right read. And that was going to be, it looked like six. Yeah, that, that could have had the potential to be a big play. So here you go. Now it's second and 10, ball at the 37. They'll run it. And you see it going again. He goes to hurdle, jumps up over a defender before being knocked to the ground. It's going to be another first down. And this time, checking into the game, the big back, Demetrius Battle, 6'2", 240. This kid has six touchdowns on the season, not a ton of yardage, but you see the physicality. That looked like an NFL-style running back right there. Yeah, Demetrius Battle, a big kid, too, 240, and only a red shirt freshman. We'll be seeing here for a couple more years. He got 13 yards and picked up the first down. They go back to battle, and he looked lower in the shoulder, just looking to punish people in the middle of the field. Henry Montgomery right there, able to bring him down, but it almost looked like he like Battle was hunting Montgomery. Yeah, they, they feed him again. Big back that time, Mon or I'm sorry, Battle. Picks up about four yards on that play. So moving down the field inside the red zone again. 19-yard line is where the ball is spotted. It brings up a second and five. They'll give him five on first down. Looking to throw here on second. Man in the flats making the catch. It's Blanchard again. He's going to get first down yardage and then some, and there was nobody around him. Whatever they ran left Bailey Blanchard wide open. Yeah, Blanchard. The last guy who lined out wide there runs a comeback route and just settles there. And he's about McDaniel's third option or third read on that play. And that's enough for the first down. So here we go. Ball at the seven. And they're going to throw on first. Blanchard pushes off Clayton. The throw's in the dirt, though, as it was a back corner, a back shoulder throw near the goal line. Comes up incomplete to bring up second and goal from the seven. Yeah, they like that matchup with, uh, with, Mc, with uh, McDaniels or Blanchard. Blanchard's a and big Clayton. kid, 6'1", 185 or so. He's, you know, good size receiver. Looks a little bigger than 185 to me. And definitely it looks bigger, at least with the eye. And it may be single number, double number, but he looks bigger than Marcus Clayton. I'll just put it that way out there on the corner. Two receivers out to each side of the set here. Battle is the single back behind McDaniels. Second seven. It's a run play middle of the line. Battle picks up a couple before he's finally... Broke down by Chandler Ferguson. And you got some jawing on the field. I was down on the field before the game. West Alabama walked through the UWF stretching, which is usually a no-no and is definitely going to create some tension. A little heat before the game starts. But these two teams don't like each other a whole lot. Big third down here for this defense. Can they hold West Alabama to a field goal here? As we said on the last drive, they've been so stingy inside the red zone. They did it again, even against Valdosta last week. Pressure coming. McDaniel slides away from it, throws into the end zone. Great job of knocking that one away. I thought they had him on the sack, but instead give Demaria Gibbons a lot of credit for coming up there and breaking that pass up. Yeah, McDaniels gets away. Gets Ian away Bush from being Ian him, Bush, yeah. and he's looking the whole time for his big tight end, Quay Boyd. Now, we've seen Quay Boyd make these type of catches one after another, but great Ooh. effort there by Givens, high-pointing that ball, knocking it away. Almost picked off there. Coming in there, I'll tell you what, great job by our crew, by the way, on that replay. That is fantastic. We'll take a break here with the two teams. We are through one quarter, 14-7. Argos lead the Tigers right here on the UWF Sports Network. Change doesn't happen by luck or chance. It doesn't quit, it doesn't give up. Real change occurs in that split second. A moment of connection among people. Who will you connect with? What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. There's nothing quite like coming together over a fresh cooked meal. Face to face, burger to burger, solving the world's problems over fries. 
There's also nothing like solving the problems right in front of you, like baseball practice, swim team, and getting your family's meals just like they like it, all with a few taps on your phone. Yeah, good thing there's more than one way to solve the world's problems. Good thing there's Whataburger. You got me falling hard, sweet baby. You got me falling hard for you. It's you. I felt this way before. You know it's you. It's you. You got me more and more. Oh, you got me falling hard. Back with you here at Blue Wahoo Stadium. Will Kennedy along with Jamie Smith. We've got a guest in the booth. We'll set that in just a second. But here we go. Fourth down from the four. It's field goal time. Nice job by this UWF defense with a hold deep in their own end. Kick is up. It is low. It's into the net, but it is good. And give the short field goal to Trey Jackson, the kicker. He's been good this season. Gets it to go through, so that gives us a 14-10 game just a few seconds in to the start of this second quarter. Let's let's see if our man here is if the microphone's working. Josh Sitton's with us. Mic check, mic check. We good? Let's see here. Can you guys hear me out there? I think we got you there. Yeah. We good? Bring it, bring it in a little closer, if you would. All right. There we go. Josh Sitton in the booth with us there. He's the guy in the white hat. Jamie Smith on the other side. Uh, Josh Pensacola guy. Catholic High School, Central Florida, played in the NFL with the Green Bay Packers, the Dolphins, and the Bears. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, you got it. I got to ask you as we, as we get the two teams back out of here for a kickoff, did you ever think you'd see football, college football, in your hometown back when you were coming out of high school? Uh, no, honestly, I didn't. Uh, and uh, to be able to see what these guys have done and Coach Shinnick has done with the team. And um, I, had a, I had a camp out there uh, not long ago. And the facilities are unbelievable. So to uh, see everything that they've done, it, it makes me proud. And uh, it's exciting to see where, where they can go. Get this kickoff here. We'll talk with Josh as we play into the second quarter. Good football game here. Josh is an offensive guy, so you've got to see some good offense rolling, at least initially here to get things started. Kick is fumbled by Shamari Mason, but he scoops it up. And he's had another good return going, but that kind of slowed him up. And he's holding his knee at the end of this play. And that is not something we want to see. We'll have to see if Shamari can get up here as the training staff comes out. Josh, your mom is an alum at the University of West Florida and also a veteran, you were telling me as well. Salute yeah. to service day, so it works out perfectly. No, it was a per perfect day. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to be out here and uh, I'm excited she got to, to come out and join me with, uh, you know, being the salute to service day. And uh, to watch the, the Golden Knights fly in was uh, pretty damn cool. So we were impressed. We had to let people know that it wasn't anybody from your alma mater jumping out of a plane yeah. to deliver the football was actually the, the we're, skydiving team. We are no longer the Golden Knights. <laughs> we're just the Knights just, now. Just the Knights I think now. it switched in like 09 or something. Yeah, that's another thing. I mean, how, how cool is it to watch that program? And I think, you know, it's interesting for me. When I was a long, long, long time ago, because I got a lot of gray going on here, when I was coming out, it was pretty much just Florida, Florida State, and Miami. Yeah. The college football landscape has changed in the state of Florida tremendously with South Florida, Central Florida, and now Division II football at Florida Tech and here at UWF. No, it's unbelievable to see what what they've done, and I'll, I'll I'll brag a little bit on myself and the guys that were in my class at UCF. We were kind of the start of that you know turnaround for that program, um, and George O'Leary was obviously amazing. And then uh, what Scott Frost was able to do these past few years um, was incredible um, to see what you know what they were able to do, and. Uh, you think they're one of the best teams in Florida for sure. Definitely so. Like I said, it has changed the way things have been done. Here we go. This drive starting on the 21. Argos will run it into the middle of the line there. Now, this has been interesting, Josh, because we've got a senior group up front, basically, especially the left side of that line through center is all a bunch of seniors. you got a local guy in the center, Devin Gibson, who yep. played at West Florida Tech, and mm -hmm. then you know, a junior and a, and a redshirt freshman. I mean, having that experience on offensive line really pays off. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's the only position that you need – um, you need the camaraderie uh, and uh, you need that communication. I mean, it's the only position that there's that many guys talking to each other every play. So uh, to be able to 
Oh, a little bit outside. Yeah, a little bit on, long on that throw from Austin Reed after a short run on first down. But, yeah, you know, that, that camaraderie, but also that I, I say this, that they often, often communicate with each other without even speaking. Yeah. You know, watching the offensive lineman, the hand signals you guys mm -hmm. use, and the way you guys are able to, you know, check out before the play and change your, your protections. It's the most important position, I think, to have um, – some time with each other you know any receiver can go out there and do um their individual thing but you know it's a it's a whole group as an offensive line big third down here third and eight ball at the 23 after two dynamite drives to start the game this one off to a little bit of a slow start receiver comes in motion it's latio reed with all day to throw it he's got tate latio that's another tate latio light catch let's see if he gets the yard is where they're going to mark this this is a kid, Josh. He's a graduate student, number 88, Tate. He's out of, uh, you know, further down in South Florida. But we are so used to seeing him run these routes out of the slot, make these catches, take the hits, and come up with big ones. Looks a little short here, though. Yep, and Pete Shinnick, it looks like he'll send the punting team on. Dawson Hamlin, the punter here. Uh, actually, you're seeing two of the best punters in Division II football, and both out of the same conference here today. Hamlin averaging about 45 yards a kick, and special teams are big. Um, you, you've played with some good ones along the way in your professional career as well. Oh, Although absolutely. I, I often wonder, you know, what what they do during practice. But you know, <laughs> kickers are people too. A lot of times they go in and play PlayStation while we're practicing. Hamlin gets this one off, kind of a wobbly kick. It's going to take a West Florida bounce. Oh, did he touch? He touched. Did he that. touch it? I don't know. They scrambled to get on it. The referee didn't see it. If it did happen, they're Looks saying like it's he did. Yeah, he I haven't seen a mark going the other way yet. Looks like the ball may be downed at the 30. It'll come out as a good kick. Some discussion or no? That's West Florida ball. Josh oh. is calling it from a fair. We don't have replays, unfortunately, at this level. Oh. We'll take a quick break here with the two teams. 13.05 to play in the first half. 14.10 is our score. You're watching and listening to Argo football right here on the UWF Sports Network. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida, no limits. For those who sweat in determined pursuit, and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile, and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Hey, who are you? Oh, hey, Jeff, I'm a car thief. What? I'm here to steal your car because, well, that's my job. What? 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 <laughs> it happens. So get all stake. I'd be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. In Pensacola, call Melissa Keener. Back with you here, Blue Wahoo Stadium on the Sunset Shores of Pensacola Bay. It's like a postcard. Josh Sitton's in the booth with us. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith with you on the UWF Sports Network. We are just dipped our toes into the second quarter of this pretty good football game, 14-10. And the first time neither team was able to come up with points, it was UWF. And that'll put the Tigers back on offense. They'll run the ball on first down. It's interesting, Josh. You know, D2 football, a lot of people may not know it as well, obviously, as they do Division One, But there have been some... Incredible athletes come out of this level, including West Alabama sent guys like Tariq Hill to the NFL. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, There's so much talent out there um, nowadays that, uh, you know, these smaller schools can can really produce some guys, and it's uh, it's fun to watch. Uh, Toss sweep. James Smith has checked into the game. We've seen all three of the, the top backs here for West Alabama. That's not a play you see all that often anymore. That's almost like – Throwing it back to the 50s and 60s, the old toss sweep to the left. Student body left, student body right, as they used to do. The old Packers, the Packers sweep. <laughs> yeah, your squad up there. Yeah. I got the chance along the way. Josh and I used to do a radio show uh, with, with Mark the Shark, our friend. But uh, yeah. Josh came through when I was in Charlotte and played. Got to, got to see him and 
Aaron Rodgers and that gang. You, you played with some good ones along the way, and they don't, they don't sweep it anymore like that with the Packers. They were slinging it all over the stadium. <laughs> yeah. Jack McDaniels, best name in football at quarterback, or one of them, throws this one out to Salisbury in the flat. He's got enough for the first down and then some. I'm impressed early on, Jamie, with this uh, – you, with this West Alabama offense. Yeah, they come out. I mean, they get their playmaker, Salisbury, who's the quick guy, quick passing game. Trent Archie is a little bit late getting over there, just enough to pick up that first down. Josh, you're a big fellow. I mean, we were saying this West Alabama line, they're north of 300, every guy across the front as they run the ball effectively here on first down. Where are all these big kids coming from? Yeah, that's a, that's a big group. I'm looking at them right now, and they, that's, a, that's a big crew for uh, D2 football. So they're uh, feeding them. Feeding, feeding them something <laughs> feeding good them down well there. in Livingston. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's interesting is you do get a lot of guys at this level who are transferring down or, you know, they, they've been at a D1, maybe gone to a JUCO or they're coming back down to this level to play for a variety of reasons. So the talent, as we were mentioning, is, is sensational at this level. First and 10 ball at the 39 of the Argos. Now McDaniels with lots of time to throw good protection. He finds his big tight end, Clay Boyd. And Boyd is going to be knocked out of bounds inside the red zone. This is a kid. As Jamie was talking about, 6'5", 245. He's, he's a load out there, Jamie. He's a big man. I mean, he hurt us a couple years ago, especially uh, in that playoff game, the one that we actually won. Quay Boy is just a playmaker, man. And you see him there. It takes about two or three guys usually to bring him down. It's always throws me off when a guy's like wearing number 18 and he's that big. You just don't expect to see that. <laughs> West Alabama, by the way, traveled exceptionally well for this game. They bring their band, and they've got a bunch of people out in the outfield bleachers out there, and now they are set up in business. Yeah, they were, they, were, they were cheering where I was sitting, and I wanted to tell them to go home. <laughs> get, get, get them out of, of there. <laughs> get them out of there. So the ball now at the three-yard line. They finally knocked Boyd out of bounds. And so in the red zone again, can this Argo defense come up with another stop? deep in their own end, kind of like we saw last week against Valdosta. They're going to go to battle, and that's just punishing some defenders as he carries them all the way, and it looks like they're not going to give him the touchdown. Nice job of fighting up front by this Argo front seven. Yeah, he's going to be a tad short. I thought he may have gotten the push by the O-line there. A They'll quick, go tempo here. Quick play, very up tempo. Yeah, go right back at it again. Battle still your single running back. They'll go back to him, and he's going to punish into the end zone. Just too big. Too much. That's not a flag. That's actually a quarterback's towel on the field. So a quick strike drive, big play to Quay Boyd, and then a short touchdown run from a yard out. That is Demetrius Battle. That's his seventh touchdown of the season on the ground. Josh, that was a nice mixture of, of some power football and a big play as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, wish it was our guys and not them, though. Yeah. No, we're going to turn. You know, th That's the way this conference works a lot is you see a lot of offense kind of back and forth. Extra point, set on the way, snap is good, the hold is good, the kick is up, and it looks like it's going into the water too. So West Alabama had the answer on that one, 17-14. Now our score with 10.30 left to play here in the first half of this one on the UWF Sports Network. journey we all have a role every life counts on you knowing yours alert today alive tomorrow because safety doesn't happen by accident what does argo spirit look like is it finding the perfect argo outfit to show your team pride is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. 
Back with you here, Blue Wahoo Stadium. 17-14 our score. Argos on the short end. West Alabama just taking the ball down the field for that last scoring drive. Really a big play drive as they end up going seven plays, 68 yards, 235 off the clock to take the lead for the first time in this ballgame. Josh Sitton is with us, Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith. And, and Josh, before we let you get back to the family and, the, and up there at the booth as we await the kickoff, you know, you're back in Pensacola, your hometown, and, and you've got some stuff going on. You're, 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 a, cat, you're a venture capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> an entrepreneur and a construction business as well. Yeah, we've uh, we've kind of been uh, you know getting ready for my retirement and setting some things up. So uh, we've got a few things going on, and we're we're excited with uh, what we're doing and what we're building. And um, you know, we love my wife and I love real estate, so we're uh, we're excited to to be doing that and helping Pensacola grow. Busy with that stuff. You're busy with with little ones too, and they're <laughs> little little. Yeah, one's two and one's seven months. So we're uh, spitting them out. Wife's already talking about another one. I don't, I don't know what she's thinking. but <laughs> One-to-one uh, one ratio is a good thing. Trust I, me on this one. I don't want to go to zone coverage. I was yeah. the oldest of five, and I think we wore my parents out. Yeah. What about it for you? I mean, any interest in coaching or anything of that nature, or you like the business side better? Uh, no, I'd like to get into um, some sort of coaching at some level or just, just to stay involved with the game at some level. I'm not sure how or when. Um, but that'll be something that uh, that I do for sure. Big strike on first down. Nice throw from Austin Reed. Puts that back foot in the ground. Zips one to Tate Latiel. That's that's what you want. That positive yardage and Tate going up, making another nice hands catch. And yeah, you run the clinics and camps here. I know over at Catholic at your old your old alma mater. And mm -hmm. uh, boy, it seems like there's a ton of kids. Everybody wants to come out for that. Uh, we've had uh, 300 plus, I think, every year. It's it's been a been a heck of a turnout second down and one they run the football here Austin Reed with the keeper and he's going to pick up the first down and move those chains for an Argo first down uh, that's that's the cool thing I know that you know the, the tradition of football in Pensacola whether it's Emmett Smith and Derek Brooks and and some of the guys that have come through that have had the chance to go on and play at the highest collegiate level and go on and play in the NFL and like yourself you know put on some Super Bowl rings and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. but but you know to give I know it's got to be really fulfilling to give back to the community especially with that kind of camp and and see the next generation come up it's amazing to see and and just to remember when I was sitting in those those seats and you know sitting on those fields myself and deep ball down the field Karan Ashley juggles it makes the catch and then I don't think if he doesn't bobble that, he's probably walking into the end zone. He walks in, no problem. It, it was enough to kind of you slow him up a little, a step or two, but I'll give him the credit just for making the catch. And Jamie, last week, we dropped one or two of those. It's good to see it, however it happens, to come oh, off the shoulder. Nice job. Yeah, that's a big makeup catch there. He dropped a key one, a key drive last week against Valdosta State. Uh, but good to see Cron actually come, come up with that catch. Caleb Abram, number 10, the corner there, was just kind of holding on for dear life and was able to, to make the tackle. But give him 46 on the throw and catch. The ball at the 20 now. Argo's looking to get into the red zone here. They'll go to big Kevin Grant on the outside. Grant's just got to put his head down and does. Picks up two or three after the catch. 6'5", he's using all that frame to try to pick some yards up there. It's been interesting, uh, Josh. Do you, you still watch any of, of your old teammates in the NFL at all, or you just kind of yeah. after, after you walk away? It's, I know guys handle it differently. No, I absolutely. I watch every game, uh, every game I can. My wife hates it, but she's like, "Was there always football this many nights of the week?" You know. <laughs> so it's. Funny she was that, only watching you. She didn't yeah, exactly. bother with the rest of it. So Monday night, Thursday night, Sunday, I'm I'm watching uh, every week. So, and uh, it's I, I've been really enjoying just being a fan. It's it's nice to be a fan again. Looking to throw here, going touchdown. to the end zone. Quentin Randolph's got it. Touchdown, Q. Again, Quentin Randolph, and I'll say it again. Q, you're my boy. 17 yards on the throw and catch. Quentin Randolph, have yourself a day, kid. As we look at the replay here. Austin Reed, route. yeah, offensive line's doing a great job buying him so much time to throw. I love this offensive line, by the way. I got to shout these guys out. They've done my camps, and they've helped out, and they're unbelievable. They're they're coached extremely well. I, I just, I really want to shout those guys Steve out. Steve Sonia is fantastic. Unbelievable. And I'm, I'm going to say this, and, and, and it's a big compliment for this guy down there, but one of my favorites, Joe Wintrick, the left guard, kind of reminds me of you a little bit as far as a, a little bit of a physical resemblance. He's not quite as big, mm -hmm. but he's got that he's got that streak in him too. You know, you know nobody's yeah. messing with Joe, and he likes to get after it a little bit. I know he kind of looks up to you as well. I'd like to, I'd like to have that guy in a foxhole with me. 
for sure. Devin Gibson against Sam Antoine, Mike Dilla, and, and Jacob Bruce over there, and they're doing a heck of a job tonight getting the team back to lead. That's what you wanted, Jamie, to answer, to go down the field and, and put that answer right back on. There's your drive summary. Five plays, 79 yards. Uh, the big one, the 240, uh, the 46-yarder to Deron Ashley, who made the he made it an interesting catch, made it a circus catch, didn't really need to be. Yeah, they may have been in the end zone sooner if he would have made that a clean catch there. But uh, Q, your guy, tops yeah. it off, puts the exclamation point on the end of that drive. This is Josh Quentin Randolph played at Navarre High School, the guy that made the touchdown catch and made the earlier one, walked on here at the University of West Florida, and he's talked about it openly. There have been times he thought about quitting and not finishing out. Now here he is, a redshirt senior, honored on senior day, and he's already made two touchdown catches. Oh, that's, that's, that's one of those stories, isn't that's it? That's cool to see. Lo love to see these local guys coming out here and playing and and having success for sure. You mentioned you, you watch, and you mentioned being a fan when you're watching, especially the NFL. Do you watch with a critical eye at all, or do you just kind of sit back and enjoy it? Uh, I definitely watch with a critical <laughs> eye. There's no question. What about was he that. doing? That kind of yeah, that kind oh, of absolutely. Uh, no, no question. And I got to ask you while you're here, you said you know watching every night of the week. Your take on what happened at the end of the game the other night between Steelers and the Browns. I mean, I, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like that. And you've seen in the division you used to play in, Dominic and Sue and some other guys yeah, and, and some, some crazy stuff. You were I've on the seen, field for some of yeah, that. Yeah, I've seen some crazy stuff, and that was that was the worst I've seen. And uh, I'm glad they suspended him for the year. And what honestly bothers me is that they uh, suspended Pouncey for that long. He's he's defending his his guy, and I think he he didn't do anything wrong. I mean, he's he's defending his guy. So I, I hate that he. He got suspended for three games. You guys always have the quarterbacks back, yeah? Oh, absolutely. And what's, you know, they let, and the refs normally let that slide, and they let you defend your quarterback, and the NFL normally lets that happen. And I hate that he ended up getting suspended for, for having his guys back. Josh, we appreciate it. Thanks for coming yeah, by and joining us in the booth for a little bit. Thanks for spending some time with us. And you, tell, tell your mom hello. And I will. Uh, We actually had a class together a long time ago. Yeah. She actually had class with our president, Dr. Martha Saunders. So yeah. it's cool to bring her home. It's kind of like a homecoming game. Yeah, so, very, Josh, very take cool. care of those little ones. We'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Nice kickoff return there by Christian Salisbury. Sets up West Alabama back in business at their own 30-yard line. Jack McDaniels looking to throw. We got a heck of a football game. This one behind is tied in. And somebody got into the man right there. Ouch. Let's see who that was that got the hit on him. The Anthony Bell. That's, a, that's punishment right there. Yeah, Quay Boyd still down. Now, here's the thing. Well, he didn't leave with his helmet, but he definitely launched right there. We'll see. Is there a flag down or no? No flag. I don't flag. see anything on the field. No flag on the plate. I'll tell you what. When a big boy that size goes across the middle, Jamie, you take your shot, right? You have you to. Get a, if you and get you, a chance. And you got to be man about it, too, because if you miss it, then he's going to know. But D'Anthony Bell got all of them on that play, and Quay Boy, the big guy, comes up slowly. Yeah, that's that would be a big loss if he. I'm sure he'll be back, but just to you know, see him go off the field even for this play. Second down to ten now after the incompletion. About 7:40 left here in the first half. 21-17 again. Our score. We've got to thank Josh for coming by. Been trying to get him out here to game for a little while. Hey, Jimmy, how cool was that to to sit in the booth with a guy like that who just I mean, and I say this about Josh sitting. He's one of the one of the most regular guys you're ever going to meet for a guy who played in the NFL for as long as he did, won a Super Bowl, and, and at one point was the highest paid offensive guard in the NFL. Yeah, blocking for one of the best, too, in the league right now in Rodgers. But, I mean, you definitely see it. That's NFL size right there. He's a, you know, an all-pro and a you know pro bowler. And, and I, for him to shout out this Argo offensive line, I know it's going to be special for them. Here we go. Here comes some pressure. Jack McDaniels with a nice job of sliding, and let's all meet at the quarterback. There it is. Towels are flying. Man down on the ground. And you see all your guys get into you. Matt Gotell is in there on that play. Miles Meyer gets to him as well. Ouch. And I thought Gotell initially overran, overran McDaniels, but he was just waiting on the rest of the crew to get there and meet him there. Bring up a long third down here. Ian Bush got a piece of that one, too. So big sack. Yeah, third and 14 you mentioned. So after that dynamic drive at West Alabama scores to take the lead, Argo's answer, and here you go, a chance for this defense for the first time to maybe kind of assert their will on this game a little bit. Three receivers out to the left. Quay Boyd back in the ball game. Boyd is back. Smith, uh, Smith is the running back. This throw is the middle of the field. He's got a man. It's going to be enough for the first down, and that's a big play for West Alabama to move the Move the chains. Big play there. Long passing. And credit to West Alabama's O-line, giving, giving McDaniels enough time to make that five-step drop. You want to you want to get off the field there. Argos, okay, I don't know what happened there. Did they not get a chance to substitute? 
They didn't throw a flag. There were still guys on the field when that ball was snapped, and that's one of the officiating crews. If the offense substitutes, the defense has to be given the option to substitute. And they didn't, they didn't throw a flag. The guys weren't off the field, but I think they let them quick snap that before they should have. Yeah, and you definitely – and that's the rule. I mean, you have to let the, uh, the other team get their guys in there also as West Alabama went to go tempo there. Second and six. Ball at the 46 after West Alabama escapes a third and 14 and looks to retake the lead in this ball game if they can get down and find the end zone. McDaniels with a quick one into the flats to Salisbury. Salisbury quick and a hard runner. It's enough for the first down and then maybe an extra yard or two. Yeah, just a quick passing game there. They get a screen pass set up to Salisbury on the outside with blockers out in front. And Salisbury, one of their one of their playmakers early in this ball game, picks up enough for a first down. That'll move the chains. Ball now in the Argos into the field at the 45-yard line as we are under six minutes to play here in the first half of this. Good football game here. Gulf South Conference play on a Saturday evening. McDaniels looking to throw. Moves the shoulders, moves the defensive back, and he throws it to the end zone. That's going to be good for a touchdown. Deep ball into the end zone. That is Tariq Martin on the 45-yard throw and catch. Just like that, the Tigers of West Alabama retake the lead in this football game. Yeah, and again, Marcus Clayton in man coverage over here. And Marcus Clayton, a speedy guy, but he lets Martin get a step or two on him, and McDaniels puts it right on the money for a six on that play. We talked about it in the pregame, Jamie. I mean, the, the quarterbacks that you see across this league, it is impressive the ability of some of these kids. Yeah, one bring, of the toughest conferences in the nation. Bring out the special teams. Unit McDaniels has been a good one for quite a while. On for the extra point. The kick is through the middle of the uprights. It is good. Trey Jackson converts. we got a West Alabama lead 24-21 to 21 now as the sun sets over Blue Wahoo Stadium. Tigers lead the Argos. You're watching and listening to Argo football right here on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Back with you here, Pensacola, Florida, Gulf South Conference football on a Saturday evening. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith with you on Your View Florida, Cox Sports TV, and our radio partners over at ESPN Pensacola, 99.1 FM, 1330 AM, WEBY, Milton, Pensacola. Good football game. 24-21 the score now. That last drive, six plays, 70 yards, 223 off the clock. The big strike, 45 yards, Jack McDaniels. Chunking that football down there to his receiver, Tariq Martin, comes up with a big touchdown catch and gives West Alabama the lead again. So this kickoff, and I haven't seen, uh, uh, Jamie, we haven't seen Shamari Mason back in the game since he took that shot to the knee there on that kick return earlier. Yeah, I hadn't seen him go back to the locker room just yet either. So I assume he's still on the sideline here cheering on his team, but you have to wonder if everything's okay with him. Yeah, that's a, that's a key part to your offense. And, They've been able to throw the ball effectively, but it looks like it is going to be Jaden Gardner in the backfield. You're already short Javon Newton. You lose Mason for this game. Uh, it leaves you two good running backs, but it takes away, really, your dynamic playmaker in the running game. 
Gardner gets his opportunity, though. He bursts through the line. Great second and third effort to twist and pick up some good yardage. This drive started at the 21. He's going to move the down marker out. Give him about four on the carry. It'll bring up second and six. Yeah, tough running there by Gardner. Able to pick up about four or five on that play. Puts Yargos in, in a good second down position here. So here we go. Second down and six. Can the Argos answer the Tigers after that last West Alabama touchdown drive? Here we go. Back to pass. Austin Reed steps into this one. He's got a man, but Tate Latio just can't come up with that one. The Kind of twisting around, trying to get his body in a position to catch the football. It'll go for an incompletion. Yeah, and that's an excellent pass there by Austin Reed. Great back shoulder throw. Latio just not able to come down with it at that last second. Looks like he may have located that ball a little late. Anthony Johnson comes in at running back on a third and six now. Ball at the 25, and really, you want to move this football down. Obviously, you want points, but you certainly don't want to give it back to that West Alabama offense this quickly with 450 left here in the half. Some motion up front. They do not stop the play. Actually, they do. Flag comes flying in, but Kevin Grant's going to make the catch. Did he have enough for the first down, and what will the call be? I believe so. Kevin Grant way past the sticks on the catch there. It'll all come down to the flag. Looked like the defense jumped, but then I saw somebody move in the middle of the offensive line. Are they just going to pick the flag up? Offside. Defense. That penalty be declined. The result of the play is a first down. We'll take it. <laughs> give the play, give the catch to Kevin Grant. 12 yards from Austin Reed. Good for a first down, and that's what we needed, Jamie, just to move those chains. Great awareness there by Austin Reed, realizing he had a, f a free play and went to his big play guy in Kevin Grant. Here we go, looking to throw again on first down. Reed looking deep down the field. He's got Kevin Grant. Grant with the catch. A beautiful throw and a great route from Grant. Grant inside the 20. They'll mark him at the 20. Now Kevin Grant is holding his arm or his shoulder. I can't tell on the ground. Here comes the training staff. Sometimes these are scary when you go down funny. Trying to protect the football. Did he roll over on one of those shoulders? Yeah, you hope he's okay there. But get great catch, great effort that time by Kevin Grant. Austin Reed really throws a nice football. That ball launched into the air. Just the perfect amount of air under it to hit Grant in stride. And the big fellow makes the catch. And he'll pop right back and up. It looks like he's getting up. But I couldn't tell if the ball was trapped under him. As we look at this nice replay for the TV audience. And he really did a great job with his hands. Yeah, it looked like he kind of dipped that left shoulder in as he was going to the ground, so maybe just a little bit of a stinger. Although he's holding that left arm at the side. We'll hope it's not a you – know, Tate Latio has been battling a shoulder all year since going back to that Carson Newman game in week one. So this is, this is part of football, Jamie. The injuries do start to mount up at certain points of the season, but a game like this where you were already short a couple guys, and if, you, if you've lost Shamari Mason for this game and you hope Kevin Grant is okay, I mean, we're deep. But we're not, you know, you don't want to test how deep you really are. Yeah, but, I mean, that's what they came into the season for, prepare for things like this. And uh, that's why you have a deep roster. Ball at the 20. They'll go with Johnson on the first down run. Johnson trying to cut back. He's going to lose a couple as he put his foot in the ground to try to put the brakes on. And you can see this turf. It just slipped out from under him. Yeah, he tried to put that right foot in the ground to make that cut. May have had some running room. But uh, that turf becoming a factor on that play once again. Yeah, you can see the slipperiness there. So you lose two as the official on the run on first down. It's a ball backed out to the 22. UWF in field goal position, but you definitely want six here, if at all possible. I wasn't going to say it. I wasn't going to talk about whether or not we have to kick anything. Let's get six. Q comes in motion across the set. Into his route. There's a good throw. Kenneth Chanel. Haven't called his name a ton lately, but we'll call it there. And that's going to be good for a first down inside the 10. Let's give him the eight-yard line. Austin Reed, I just love the confidence with which he's throwing the football, putting that back foot in the ground and, and just delivering it. Yeah, great throw by, by Austin Reed. You had Jalen Hatcher or Josh Hatcher dropping in coverage in that zone. Kenny Chanel sneaks right behind him, and Reed puts it on the money yet again. Latio, Randolph, and Coates out to the left. It is Chanel. Single on the short side of the field. Jaden Gardner is the running back. Well, the composure for a redshirt freshman in Austin Reed, truly impressive. But, he, of course, he's been at the controls of this offense all year. Zings this one to Kenneth Chanel. Touchdown Argos from eight yards out. Nifty little move in the backfield by Austin Reed to buy himself some time, and he finds his man. Welcome back, Kenneth Chanel. And one of Austin Reed's favorite receivers to start the year. 
He steps up in the pocket, attracts, the, attracts that second wave of the defense. Chanel able to sneak behind and tiptoe in the back of that end zone for six. What I love, Jamie, is he could have run, and a young quarterback oftentimes will put his head down. He, had, he might have scored if he were to run, but instead he wants to throw that football, and you see the little slide to the side and the delivery of another strike, and it's good for six points. We await the PAT. Austin Williams, the kick is up. It's no good. I saw the official kind of jerk his head a little bit. This one is a miss. And so it stays at a three-point game instead of being a four-point spread. 27-24 now. Argos retake the lead as we go back and forth here in the first half of a good football game. Some push-ups coming for the ROTC here on Salute to Service Night at Blue Wahoo Stadium. So, Jamie, I think you, by just mentioning the kicking game, you may have cursed that extra point. Yeah, you can put that one on me. I uh, haven't mentioned it all game, and the first time we do, I uh, missed the extra point. But uh, Austin Reed has been pretty solid in these last coming weeks since he struggled earlier in the year. Yeah, those, those first PATs looked very strong early on. Take a look at some of the stats. I mean, both quarterbacks playing exceptionally well. Jack McDaniels, 10 of 15 for 177 and two touchdowns in this game. So he's been, he's been effective, as has Austin Reed. How about this, Jamie? 16 of 18. 89% completion, 256 yards and three touchdowns. Those are kind of like the numbers Rogan Wells was throwing up from Valdosta last week, but Austin Reed has been sensational. We're watching a gunslinger's battle between these two QBs. Yeah, and, and McDaniels not far from behind these two top quarterbacks in the league in Rogan Wells and Austin uh, Reed. Uh, McDaniels, the third quarterback in GSC in passing yardage and, we showing, and showing out today. Argos have four receivers better than 50 yards already in this football game. This kick up high in the air. It'll be Salisbury fielding at about the 8 or 9-yard line across the 20, across the 25, across the 30. He's got some running room. It's going to be a big return. He gets across midfield. He's still on his feet before he's finally dragged down. Huge return, about 50, 52 yards. Is it? They're going to mark him at the Argos 40. That is a field flipper, and then we're going to have a flag back behind the plays. The two teams some special teams players getting into it. This is probably going to be unsportsmanlike. I'm just not sure who it's on. Yeah, that's going to be on. Uh, they're going to get artists, looks like, as he shoved the player from West Alabama at the end of that run. That is going to be a big penalty. Coach Coach, Coach P. Shannon talking to his guy there, saying you got to be better than that. Yeah, a mistake like that, you add that on to a 50-plus yard kick return, and they're going to be close to the red zone by the time this ball is marked off. Yeah, you definitely need artists, too, with the injury to, to Joshua Smiley. He plays not only a key cog in that special teams game, but on defense as well. Argos have struggled. Kicking team number 33. He threw a punch. He is disqualified. Wow, Jamie, you saw Half it. Half the distance to the goal. First down. It was DeMarco Artis, and now, yeah, they're saying with a punch thrown, jawing going on. West Alabama player, I don't know, I haven't seen a punch yet. He's definitely just put his hands to face masks. If they're calling that a punch, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, hands to the face, I guess. But now you lose a linebacker who was already filling in for a linebacker you had lost in Josh Smiley. You're getting thinner and thinner at key positions on both sides of the football. That is a big blow. As you see, Art is headed to the locker room with the strength and conditioning staff. That's a tough one, and you got to be better than that, and you got to know coming into a game like this, Jamie, that they're going to be in your face, and there's going to be a lot of jawing, although I, it definitely looked like one of the West Alabama players made contact with DJ first, stepping into him, and you kind of wonder, where's the officiating crew on that? Yeah. They've got to get in between that before it gets to that level. Yeah, yeah, still have to be better than that if you're an artist, though, knowing, knowing what they're trying to do. It's always the guy who retaliates and gets caught, and it looks like a halfback pass on first down. This one could be. Tossed up and picked off, and it is. The trick play is a mistake. Henry Montgomery comes up with the interception. Nice job by this Argos defense of staying disciplined and not biting on that play. Great job by Montgomery, filling the in on that defense. One of the guys we haven't seen a lot on that defense this year. They had their big back that yeah, time. They went with battle to throw. <laughs> battle to throw it in, in Montgomery in the right place at the right time. That's the old Oski drill, ball up in the air. Let's see, and I, whoever that was up front, Closing on battle, forcing him to throw that a little before he wanted to. He just chunked it up down the field for Dayon Hill. 
Nice job of a couple of Argo defenders. I couldn't see who tipped it first, but getting their hands to it. That does put you deep in your own territory, but you'll take it because now your offense gets back on the field with 2.46 to play. And even if they can just move it out of the shadow of their own goal line and eat some time off the clock, it's a win. Yeah, and you give Austin Reed a chance to put points on the half or the board before half. Here we go. Tate Latio in motion across the set. Anthony Johnson is the running back. They'll run on first down. Johnson puts his head down and gets out to the five-yard line before he'll be stopped there. So a gain, a short gain of two. You see, I, I Jamie, I do kind of – I'm concerned at this point that – it's getting, you know, it's physical. It, it, we started physical. We started with some jawing, as I mentioned before the game began, that this officiating crew doesn't really step on top of this right now, and maybe ejecting a player does that. But you do worry that West Alabama, who doesn't have the playoffs to play for, is willing to kind of, you know, amp things up to another level. Yeah, and you have to be level-headed if you're on the UWF side of things, knowing, knowing what you have ahead of you possibly after this game. They give him three on the carry, second and seven. Johnson stays in at running back. Reed looking to throw on second down. He's got Latio out past the 10, and Latio takes a shot to the kidney and drops the football. That's painful right there. I can't blame him for, for not catching that ball. This is a kid who's a warrior who we talked to last week on the pregame show. He's just been banged up, and that hurts. You can see the shoulder pad right into his kidney. Yeah, tough kid. I mean, Latio pops right back up after that throw, but hard hit that time. It looks like that was uh, 27 for uh, Elston for West Alabama who delivered that yeah, ball. Yeah, Latio, he's, he's still bending over down there. He's going to stay in the game. And, you know, Tate Latio, we use the term warrior in sports and with football a lot. I mean, he, this truly is a kid who, who's, you know, he's going to go out on his shield, so to speak. Uh, he's not, you're going to have a hard time getting him off the field. That would have been enough for a first down. Reed takes a pop, comes up with a throw. He was getting hit as he let that one go. That's going to be pass interference Yeah, pass that interference time. is Latio <laughs> just takes a hard shot, gets up, runs a heck of a route, and has a chance to make a play. And, and look at the replay here at the shot Reed takes to deliver this football. Yeah, I mean, he had the defender out there that you just you just referenced him, number 27. Yeah, Trey Elston. Elston, you know, gets a bump in down the field, can't do that. Yeah, and that's a mismatch. I mean, Latio just running a, 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 a go route pretty much on that play and pretty – Clear as day there. Well, Elston held on, held on to him. Interesting that this this is going to get you out of the hole in your own end and put you in a position. Argos still have both their timeouts yeah. here with a with a minute 40, 49 left on the clock. Had to take one very early in the game, but you mentioned Jamie. They both have two right there, and this is going to be interesting to see down the stretch of this half. Can they get themselves down into? the West Alabama end, and then can they get close enough for a touchdown, or are we looking at a kick at some point here? Ball just across the 20 at the 21. Reed slides forward in the pocket. He's going to tuck it up and throw it down the field. And, again, you got some contact in that route. Latio can't come up with the catch, but a nice job. And Reed is talking to the officials back behind the play. And this every play you're seeing this jawing, and now the referees are getting in there and kind of doing some work. Johnson will come back in for Gardner. But nice job by Austin Reed here as the pocket kind of collapsed. He slides forward. Somebody's got his jersey. Just scrambling, and that's a good throw on the move, but you had defenders in the neighborhood. Yeah, a lot of defenders in that area there. As he was trying to go to Tate Latio, who was basically playing that scramble routine with Austin Reed. A nice, a nice throw on the run, just not able to complete it, and it'll bring up second and 10 as we tick under 141 here. Here we go, Reed. Back to pass. That was an ill-advised throw, looking for Karan Ashley across the middle of the field. And unfortunately, it's an incompletion. And there's a flag Another on the play flag, as well. Yeah. They're coming fast and furious. Now let's see. Late hit, potentially. Let's see what the call is. Reed took a pop at the end of the play, for sure. And you see the UWF players kind of talking to each other, telling each other to calm down, to, you know, kind of check it a little bit. We'll, we'll wait the call from this officiating crew. Holding, offense oh. number 52. Penalties declined, third down. The Sam Antoine gets called with the hold. A minute 35 left. That'll bring up a third and 10. By the way, Brian Henry just sent me a message up from the field. Uh, Kevin Grant, it was the left shoulder. Not sure if it popped out, but he is on the sideline, and at least for now, does not look like he'll be back in this game. So another big loss. Uh, DJ Artis, linebacker, already tossed from the game. Kevin Grant injured. Shamari Mason 
We don't know what his status is down there. You're already missing Javon Newton. They're starting to add up Josh Smiley as well. So, and then, of course, Sherrod Oliver, your corner. So some key, key players missing. Third and ten, it looks like we got a jump, and that's going to back it up, make this even tougher. Yeah, they're going to back them up again. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Now you're looking at about a third of 15 here. That's not where you want to be. Thank, thankfully, you got the first down on the pass interference, so at least you got some room to punt regardless of what happens here on third down. But you just do not want to give them the football back with some time on the clock in your own end of the field. And you have to wonder what the play call here will be. Will Coach Shinnick decide to make an attempt at the first down? Yeah, do you or run it? Or, yeah, but I, I got a feeling we're just call talking it Pete Shinnick, you're going to throw this football. You trust your quarterback and let him go to work. Pocket collapsing again. Anthony Johnson, middle of the field. He's got some running room. Tuss, cuts it upfield. Gets out two. And he'll have enough for the first yeah, the, down. Near the 35. Great play call what a there. Good, and we, we, that's a play we haven't seen much this year Great at all. Great play call there. They get that running back out of the backfield. Get him incorporated in that passing game. You can see Johnson sneaks up there in the middle. Just a flick of the wrist there for Austin Reed and let Johnson do the rest. Yeah, he's going to pick up a good 10, 15 yards after the catch. Good enough for a first down. So on the move now, minute 10, ticking under. Reed had a man. He slides. He finds underneath. He goes to Johnson again. Johnson kind of twirls and whirls, and he'll go down. We'll see. Do they call a timeout here? Yes, they do with 59 seconds left. So some, some good yards on first down. I'll tell you what, Anthony Johnson, I know it's tough, and I've talked with these guys throughout the year. You know, when you're a running back and you're not getting a ton of carries and you're not in there, by default, this may be an Anthony Johnson kind of night. We're seeing him out of the backfield catching the football, some good tough runs as well. It's good to have a guy like that, an experienced junior who's been in these battles, has been in the fire when you need him. And Johnson knows this West Alabama team very well. Uh, that playoff, the playoff year where we made our national championship run, Johnson was a key factor in that win up in Livingston. He had a big day. I don't have the exact numbers on Johnson when he was up in Livingston, but played a, a key role in that win a couple of years ago. You'd have to have a big, big memory to go back that far to those numbers. Or, an, or a nice computer. <laughs> or, or a computer. <laughs> or, or a staff of stat checkers. People always ask me, like, you know, for the, for the big time, we had Josh sitting in the booth earlier, but for, like, an NFL broadcast, how do those guys know all those numbers? Because somebody's telling them in their ear. They got a, a, a crew of people making it happen. That was four yards on the last completion to Anthony Johnson from Austin Reed. Savon Parker with the tackle. That's going to set up a second and six now. 59 seconds left here in the half. Reed, he's going to look deep down the field. He's got Karan Ashley. If he can make a play on the ball, he goes up and can't make the catch. Good job on some coverage deep downfield. The fans are obviously wanting to pass interference call on that one. They're not going to get it this time around. Yeah, I don't know, and I don't think he, he, he turned his head around, but that ball was still a little bit underthrown there by Austin Reed, and he never got his oh, head he around. he never turned. That's pass interference all day, every day. Mike Kidd, number 49, who's also, he's a big defensive back. He, they list him at 6'1", but you see him with Karan there, matching size for size. Yeah, unfortunately, at this level, that happens. You don't get the call all the time. But uh, I, liked, I like the play call, and I like the throw from Austin Reed as well. Stops the clock, though. Third and six now with 52 seconds left here in the half. What a Coach Shinnigan and this offense have dialed up. It's a quick throw, but it's at the feet of Quentin Randolph. Don't know if that was just a, a, the wrong route, or did Reed just have to get rid of it quickly? It looked like he had some time. Yeah, there was a mis miscommunication between Randolph and Reed on that route as <laughs> Q looked back and was wondering why he threw it so soon. But uh, they'll take him off the field. They'll be forced to punt the ball here, and only giving West Alabama about 49 seconds here, but they do have all three timeouts to work with. This would be a, a good time for Dawson Hamlin to come up with one of those big ones, one of those inside the 20, one of those 50-plus yarders here, and we'll see. Do they go rugby style as the snap's a little bit low? Hamlin gets this thing out end over end, and it's going to take a high bounce. Not the, the longest of kicks, but good enough to get inside the 25 and down at the 24. That's a tough one as a punter, and I'm going to say that may not be his best kick, but the fact that that ball skidded into him on a snap to pick that thing up off the ground and get it away and not get it blocked is a win. Yeah, Dawson Hamlin, another great job, another great punt. He's an athlete. He really is. He does I mean, it all. Big kid. If you, if you, if you walk past Dawson, he wears number 12. You'd think he was a quarterback or maybe a wide receiver the way he's built. It's always nice to have a punter who has 
that kind of physical presence out there. They'll mark it at the 25, so West Alabama go right back on offense. McDaniels in the backfield with Battle. Last time they had the ball, Battle, now that's Underwood, excuse me, number three, but Battle threw a pass, a halfback pass that was intercepted. Here they come back. This one's just off the hands of the receiver, and you see Trent Archie, he slipped there too and went down. Over near this UWF sideline seems to be some treacherous footing. Yeah, Trent Archie, good coverage there, right up to the end where he slipped, and thankful Smallwood, or um, I'm sorry, Salisbury dropped that pass. Hit him in the worst place possible, right in the hands. Right in the hands. Right in the hands. That'll bring up second and 10. 33 seconds left. Can this Argos defense just get off the field and take a three-point lead in a heck of a football game? 27-24 our score. Argos lead the Tigers here. Here comes some pressure. And, and running right in the middle of that pressure is Underwood. As he gashes, it looks like enough for the first down. He's going to get out to the 35. And West Alabama can still run the ball. They have three timeouts left as they yeah. do take a timeout there. And Underwood gashes them for about 10 on that play. Great crowd here tonight, by the way, in Blue Wahoo Stadium. Uh, salute to service night. Uh, we talked about it. We'll show you at halftime a little bit, you know, some of the festivities that took place here earlier today. We had the Army and the Air Force outside, the you know, Scambia County Local Sheriff's Department here on display as we honor active and retired military, our first responders as well. They had things outside for the kids. You could take rides in some of the vehicles. And they, they had the big guns, literally, literally outside kind of set up not no ammo but but big guns and so we're honoring our service members today and then for the first time i think that in school history it's only the second year of our band here at the university of west florida we got the west alabama band in here too so you've got kind of a battle of the band here it is here are the golden knights parachuting in with the game ball pre-game earlier today how cool is that something that hasn't happened here at blue wahoo stadium before as well stick the landing kid back to the action mcdaniel's looking to throw Outside of the numbers, he's going to pick up close close to another first down. It looks like by the time all is said and done, Tariq Martin with the catch. And so that was kind of how we got things going with the Golden Knights coming in and honoring the military. We'll do more of that here at the half. We've got a very special halftime planned for you out there in our viewing and listening audience. 22 seconds left here in the first half. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith with you on Your View Florida, Cox Sports TV, and on the radio on ESPN Pensacola. Looking to throw it, pressure coming, and a nice dump off in the middle to Underwood who makes the first guy miss, makes the second guy miss. Can somebody please get him on the ground? The only good thing is that eats up about 10 or 11 seconds off the clock with the extra moves. Yeah, long play there as Dyer had, a, a, or McDaniels had a lot of time back there in the pocket and took about a five-step drop before dropping it to his running back battle. Made uh, Trent Archie miss. Finally flying in there to make the tackle from behind, and Get him on the ground with 11 seconds left. So one timeout left for each team after this timeout is, you know, the, the kicking game is pretty strong for West Alabama. They haven't tried a ton of field goals. We saw one made earlier from basically point blank range. But Zach Gaines, their kicker, excuse me, uh, Zach Gaines has been, he's been good to the tune of now five for six on field goals this season, but nothing longer than 36 yards. So not quite sure where his range would be how much closer they would need to get to have a shot, but they really only have, Jamie, one play to try to get it in field goal range. They do have the timeout if they need to stop it, so the middle of the field is still open. Yeah, one timeout, 11 seconds on the clock. We'll see what they choose to go here. It'll probably be a pass. McDaniels, here comes the pressure. Can they get him on the ground? If they can, this is the end of the half, and they do. How about that Argo defense coming up with a gigantic play as they chased him? That looked like when you're chasing some kids down the street to the cul-de-sac because they stole your bike. Yeah, Trent Archie and, 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 and Kelly in there on the sack. Clock will run out. Nice job by that defense holding strong here as we go into the set, as we go into halftime. Kedrick Bradley getting in on that play as well. We're going to try to get, as we always do, Coach Shinnick down there with Brian Henry. We'll give him a second to get to that. But 27-24 is our score here at the half. And really a, a lot of offensive fireworks both teams uh 17 first downs for west alabama 15 for the argos it's been a well played first half of football as really it's been west alabama's running game with 91 yards and the uwf passing game has been sensational at 279. coach shinnick is talking to the officials having some some strong words with the officiating crew as he's coming off the field very animated right here Yeah, definitely. I don't, I'm, I'd love to know what he's saying, and we'll see if Brian Henry can, can catch him here. But I know Pete's not going to be happy with, with some of the calls that he's seen here. Maybe talking about that last 
potential pass interference down the call, down the field call deep on the Cron Ashley throw. Let's check down in the field. Brian Henry is caught up with, with Coach Pete Schenick for our halftime interview. Brian? Well, Coach, 279 yards passing. Uh, that's pretty much as good as Austin's looked all year. How do you feel about your offense right now? Yeah, very good with the offense. We got we to gotta tackle better on defense. Uh, we knew it would be a great game like this. We just got to play better in the second half. Your defense has stood tall these last two possessions. Is the last team that has the ball going to win tonight? Well, <laughs> we'll find out in the second half. We just got to play better. Thanks. Okay. Good luck. Back up to you, to Will. Thank you, Brian. Uh, keeping it keeping it clean there. I, I'm right there with him. Let's hope it doesn't come down to that. Let's do a little bit better than that. We'll take a break here. We'll be back with our halftime show for you here. You're watching and listening to Argo Football. 27-24 the score. Argos lead at the half right here on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. You got me falling hard, sweet baby. You got me falling hard for you. It's still, I felt this way before. You know it's true. It's still, you got me more and more. Oh, you got me falling hard. For those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back into halftime here of the UWF football game. I am joined now by Lieutenant Colonel Drew Herzberg, and he is the, a professor of military science, which I think is one of the coolest titles, but also kind of in charge of the ROTC program at the university. Tell me a little bit about that program and kind of what it means both to the university, but also to your students. Yeah, so the, the Army ROTC program, we've got about 85 uh, students uh, who are enrolled as cadets, and uh, they can take anywhere from uh, two to four years of Army ROTC. And uh, once they graduate, we'll commission them as a uh, lieutenant in the United States Army. And that can be on active duty uh, in the United States Army Reserves or the Florida National Guard. Um, and so that's an opportunity coming out of college, right, to have your future known, right? <laughs> You've got a your full-time active duty gig, right, and you're getting that paycheck. So um, that's one, one of the things that, you know, a lot of our students are interested in, right, in addition to the opportunity to um, do exciting training, exciting um, uh, activities that the, the Army is typically known for. You know, we've got 7th Special Forces Group out here who's obviously an, uh, an Army unit. We're going to have the Golden Knights. They're going to jump in the game ball. So those are all opportunities that can exist within the Army. Um, and then, you know, what you get in a town like this is that really is that, uh, that service mindset, you know, that they want to be part of that and serve their nation. As a parent, I hear get school paid for, have a job right away, beautiful thing. And, and you just touched on it. This is, this is a military area with, you know, Eglin, Pensacola, NAS, all, all the military tradition and rich heritage here. It is Salute to Service Day here for this football game. It means a lot to this community. It does, and, and this community means a lot to us because there are uh, a lot of things that we couldn't accomplish um, for what we need as a nation, right, without the support of the community. So it's, it's, it goes beyond 7 Special Forces Group and Naval Air Station Pensacola and the support that they provide us uh, as we develop and train and educate our cadets, but it's also to the community at large um, and the ability for local high schools and the JROTCs at the high schools, the support that they provide to us, the support that we provide to them, and frankly, just parents and families in the area being, being willing to sign up and say, my son or daughter, absolutely, I want them to be part of the military. 
um, and be part of the Army. And so uh, we really appreciate that from the local community, what they offer and uh, what they give to us. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel. Appreciate your time here today. Coming up next, we'll continue our halftime festivities here on the UWF Sports Network. Just felt there's a huge need in Pensacola to bring foot and ankle services, specifically orthopedic foot and ankle services, to this area. There's so much growth in Pensacola. I wanted a, a freestanding orthopedic foot and ankle center uh, to do this. And as far as I can tell, this is the only one really in the country that's freestanding. Most orthopedic surgeons are part of a multi-specialty group. So we offer on-site x-rays, on-site CT scan, and on-site MRI. They can come to one place. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. That's my daughter. In this journey, we all have a role. Every life counts on you knowing yours. Alert today, alive tomorrow, because safety doesn't happen by accident. Welcome back in here to Blue Wahoo Stadium. Joining me now is Lori Milkaris. Did yeah. I say that right? You did. I got job. it right from Thank the you. Military <laughs> and Veterans Resource Center at the University of West Florida. And Lori, thanks for being here, first of all. But this is um, our Salute to Service Night, and we've had a great afternoon. I mean, people outside, and it was really cool to see uh, some of the military displays out there, our ROTC. But also, you guys uh, do a great function for this area, which is so heavily military with the, you know, the Navy base Pensacola NAS and also Eglin right down the road, uh, providing some great services for our, our veterans, when they, especially when they come home from being deployed. 100%. We try and do it while they're still in as well, too, helping them out with any educational benefits they may need, but most definitely. And thank you for having me, by Oh, absolutely. Way. So what, what are some of the things that are on offer uh, through, through the DRC? Yeah, so our um, office can pretty much help you while you're still active duty, can help your spouses get through school, have any questions. We'll help you with any questions that you have if you're even not going to UWF. Just want to make sure that all of our veterans and our active duty have all the right information. We also have a veteran entrepreneurship program that we put on through veteran with um, partnership with Veterans Florida. And we have free workshops going on right now. So November 20th, we have one at 1130 in Crestview. And they, they rotate around where they are. So if you get on Eventbrite and look up um, Veterans Florida Entrepreneurship Program, you can see where all those programs are offered. How do people get in contact with you guys and, and let them know where you're located on campus in case they just happen to be out enjoying nature and of want to course. come across and visit? Yeah, so you can either um, email MVRC, Military Veterans Resource Center at uwf.edu. You can call our office, 474-2550, or you can stop into Building 38, Room 147 on the UWF campus. Chuck, right there in one of the nice little spots of campus over. Uh, the building numbers get a little confusing, so just you know, look do. at the map and make sure you find 38. What are, the, what are the main things that you hear from folks when they come out and, and they're looking to, to, whether it is to transition from the military back into civilian life or just as they're starting to think about that process? Um, well, if they're going to school, it's really hard to figure out all their VA benefits and that process so we can help them that. But just that transition in general of that, that confined, controlled, you know everything you got to do, what you got to wear, what you got to say, and then that freedom that opens up. And so it's that bow tie effect that kind of gets them lost a little bit. And so we, we like to help them that. All of us that work there, we're all veterans or dependents of veterans, myself, myself being an Air Force veteran. So we've walked that walk with them so we can help them build that camaraderie and get, get back into the groove of civilian life and how to transition back and, 
and be more comfortable here. And if they're not quite re ready yet, we can get them the counseling and the assistance that they need as well. What a great service it is. So, of course. Lori Milk Harris, thank yes, you for joining sir. us. And thank you for your service, oh, by the thank way. Thank you. Uh, so you mentioned email, call, stop email, by, call, say hello. Stop by. The Military <laughs> Veterans Resource Center out at the University of West Florida. This time, we're going to kick it down to the field uh, and the PA announcer for some of the festivities here at halftime. Thanks. Excellence among the University of West Florida Army ROTC Argonaut Battalion. Please welcome to the field UWF's Army ROTC Professor of Military Science, Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Herzberg, and the Senior Military Science Instructor, Master Sergeant Nicholas Cage. This year, the Army ROTC program has two distinguished military graduates, Cadets Patrick Rother and Andrew Harper. These seniors will graduate in the top 20% of more than 6,000 cadets nationwide based on their academics, fitness, and military proficiency. Patrick Rother, class of 2020, is the cadet commander and will graduate with a degree in nautical science. He'll commission as an active duty second lieutenant in the military intelligence branch. In addition, in ROTC cadet, Rother also serves in the Florida Army National Guard with Pensacola's Troop B, 153rd Cavalry, where he was supported, uh, has supported multiple hurricane recovery efforts across the state. Andrew Harper, class of 2020, will graduate among the top 10% of cadets in the nation when he earns his nursing degree this spring and commissions as an active duty second lieutenant in the Army Nurse Corps. Since joining the ROTC program, he attended the ROTC Advanced Course, the Army Air Assault School, and a nursing internship at Tripler Army Medical Center in Honolulu, Hawaii. For their many accomplishments, Lieutenant Colonel Herzberg will present them the Distinguished Military Graduate Certificate. Next, we recognize Brianna Sanchez, class of 2021. Cadet Sanchez continues a family tradition of military service. Her brother and sister are currently on active duty, and her father is the command sergeant of Major and Major of 7th Special Forces Group. She excelled in ROTC in her right earned a two-and-a-half-year Army ROTC scholarship to pursue a Bachelor's of Science degree in exercise science. We expect great things from her, and Lieutenant Colonel Herzberg will present her with a check for $38,000. Finally, we'd like to recognize Master Sergeant Nicholas Cage, the Senior Military Science Instructor, who will be moving to his next assignment this spring. For the past three years, Master Sergeant Cage molded and developed the raw talent of cadets into the professional expertise of Army officers. His patience, dedication, and mentorship demonstrated the finest aspects of the non-commissioned officer corps and reflected great credit upon him, Army ROTC, and the United States Army. He will be missed. Ladies and gentlemen, your UWF Army ROTC Argonauts. And you see, it's Salute to Service Night, a chance to honor the ROTC and at the University of West Florida. Great staff there and also the military in general. We will take a break here. We come back. We'll take a look at highlights from the first half and get you ready for action in the second half of this one. 27-24, Argonauts lead the Tigers here on the UWF Sports Network. You got me falling hard. This is not a restaurant. This is slow smoking that stirs your soul. The stuff that makes going out feel like coming home. This is not a restaurant. It's a barbecue, 50 years in the making. Come fill up on all your favorites. Sonny's Barbecue, come taste tradition.
Here at CPC, you're not just a customer, you're part of the family. We operate seven offices throughout the Florida Gulf Coast and Alabama regions with nearly 100 employees to best serve you, the customer. So thank you to all of the thousands of businesses who have helped to make us a leader in the office technology industry for more than 45 years. We will continue to provide a level of service that can't be copied and look forward to the bright future that lies ahead for our communities, cities, and country. Back here with you, Blue Wahoo Stadium, Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith. Halftime of this game, 27-24 Argonauts lead the West Alabama Tigers. Heck of a first half, Jamie, and uh, the injuries, though, unfortunately, starting to mount up. We're waiting on some updates from down on the field as to who is done for the game, who may still be available, but either way, the depth is going to get tested tonight. Let's take a look at some, some highlights from the first half in this one, and, and this was the, uh, the beginning for us on Salute to Service Night, and you had... All kinds of displays of the military on hand today for this one. Paratroopers coming in, dropping off uh, pregame footballs. Pretty cool to see out over the bay. And I, I still don't know exactly how they stick the landing the way they do when they bring these footballs into the sta stadium, Jamie. But this is, I can get used to this. Yeah, we should just make it an every Saturday thing. That'd be awesome. <laughs> That'd be awesome. But great to see that and salute the service here on, and, and, and commemorating and really, really our, cool our military members. The way that this works with, you know, having... So many military people in the Pensacola area, the Pensacola community, whether it's Pensacola NAS or down to Eglin and, and the, all the retirees in the area. But So a way to honor them is just absolutely fantastic. And uh, they, like I said, they dropped the football in here, brought it right down to the pregame crew before the game. And then the game off to a very quick start. First touchdown, Austin Reed to Quentin Randolph up top. Big catch and just what we're used to seeing from Q and and we, we said fast start. They got off to a fast start. Yeah, great throw and catch there between Randolph and Reed. And we may need Quentin Randolph big in the second half as, as injuries are taking a, a bigger role than we initially thought. There you go. Right back on the answer, though, Christian Salisbury with the touchdown catch. We were tied up at seven. Jack McDaniels found him. And it really has been a game of, you know, you got to make some adjustments. Austin Reed, though, with the score tied, he runs, and the ball is knocked loose at the end. Big Sam Antoine. You see him, number 52, falling on it there. Good for a UWF touchdown to make that happen. And then on the answer again, nice scramble and a great job of breaking this up. Demaria Gibbons takes one away from Quay Boyd after the McDaniel scramble, holding him to a field goal that would, right as we flipped over to the second quarter, bring the score to 14 to 10. So the Argos kind of maintaining that lead. After a, a stop by this West Alabama defense, you come right back. It's big, the big guy battle, banging one in from short range, and first lead of the night for the Tigers. But right back on the answer, Austin Reed up top. Quentin Randolph with a diving catch, this time a little lower to the ground. Argos are back in front in the ball game, 24-21. to 21. Got to love to see this passing game explode the way it has early on. And then McDaniels. Down the field, his team trailing by four. And that shoulder turn, Jamie, the defensive back bit on it, and then he got beat to the corner. Yeah, Marcus Marcus Clayton having a tough day over there, whether it's on Blanchard or Martin. He's had a tough day, but credit to Jack McDaniels, that quarterback, putting that ball on the money. Yeah, Tariq Martin with the catch, and then Austin Reed on the scramble, keeps the legs moving, finds Kenneth Chanel in the end zone. The PAT, no good, but the Argos take a three-point lead to the half. 27-24, as we were mentioning earlier, really the, the statistical story has been that passing game for the University of West Florida, 279 yards, three touchdowns for Austin Reed in the first half of that one. Uh, big turnover here as Battle tried to throw the halfback pass, and you see it get tipped around, knocked around. Henry Montgomery finally coming up with that INT, and then really a nice job of, of holding before the half of coming up. Uh, keeping it West Alabama off the board. How about your staff's stats from the first half? It's really been the passing game for the Argos against the running game, the power running game, especially this uh, West Alabama team. Pretty even as far as your numbers of total offense are concerned. The turnover, no points off of it, but it may have kept West Alabama out of the end zone, so really kind of a win as far as that's concerned for this Argo defense. Yeah, and the offense is doing a heck of a job this game, you know, getting towards that 400-yard 400, 400 threshold that they like to be at per game. A defense is going to come up or is going to have to play a bigger role in the second half as West Alabama is really looking like they're, they're clicking on all cylinders. Argos have 
advantage of the time of possession in about 17 minutes to 13 minutes, but time of possession is really, I don't want to say it's irrelevant in this game, but the way these offenses are moving and the big play capabilities that we've seen, you're not going to be that worried about time of possession as far as that's concerned. As we're just about set to get the second half underway here. It, it's some of the injuries that we're really worried about at this point, and you, you see some names. Kenneth Chanel, a couple catches there in the first half. Uh, not quite what we're used to seeing because uh, he hasn't played a ton lately, but we understand Kevin Grant, shoulder injury in this game. We saw Tate Latio take a hard knock or two. Not sure that he'll be back. We, I've been told Shamari Mason is done for the rest of the game. He suffered a knee injury on a kick return earlier, and we're really expecting to see some big things out of Shamari. We've seen DJ Artis, the linebacker, ejected in this game. You're already missing Josh Smiley and Sherrod Oliver from that defense as well. So there are some holes to fill. The question, Jamie, is are, do you have enough fingers to put in all the holes in the dam to keep the water out? Yeah, that's going to be the big question to answer in the second half. They had death on both sides of the ball, so it's going to be tested here. Jaden Gardner and Anthony Johnson really are going to see the bulk of the carries now just by default because Javon Newton, I forgot to mention, he's out after the hard hit he took against Valdosta last week. So you, you go from four running backs down to two. Short kick to start the second half. Again, West Alabama won the toss, deferred to the second half. Some dancing. It's going to be a nice kick return out across the 35 just short of the 40, so good starting field position. I don't see a whole lot of wind. In fact, the flag, the big American flag out there in center field in this baseball stadium is kind of sitting limp. I'm not quite sure why the kick was that short. Well, it looked like a, a by design as they were trying to keep it away from the big returner. Uh, I believe Salisbury, who does most of that returning back there, uh, that looked like by design a little pooch kick, kind of like what we saw in the first half there by Austin Williams. So there you go. Setting up here, this drive will start at the 37 for West Alabama. Pretty good field position to get things going here in the second half. Underwood up the middle, punishing runs. And this is that power running game we were just referencing is really kind of the advantage that this West Alabama team has on offense is their ability to run the ball, especially between the tackles, and just the ability to stop, start, and make guys miss. Yeah, Underwood, just a, another one of those guys in that stable of back, that backs that they have. Able to get behind that O-line for a great push. Been a whale of a ball game so far. We'll see if it continues to be that way in the second half. And there's a nice run after the first down run on the first carry. Picking up some positive yards here on the next carry. Going to give him maybe seven on this first down run. Yeah, again, Underwood keeping those legs moving. Picks up about, like you said, well, seven on that play. This Set offensive four, line has been impressive as far as their ability to push off the ball and kind of handle what has been a very, very good defensive line of West Florida this season with the number of guys you can run in there and some of the size of the bodies up there matching size for size. Is this carry is going to be enough for the first down? It was second and long three, short four. And they will well, keep the chains where they are for right yeah, now. It looks like they're going to mark him third and short. Half and inch one. or so. Okay, they're going to come out with a like. measure. Yeah, I, I thought they initially. Now they're saying move the sticks. Yeah, I thought the initial spot was clearly a first down. So they're going to go ahead and move it and give him a fresh set of downs. Ball now at the 42 of the Argos. So just that quickly to start the second half, just barely a minute off the board. West Alabama's already in the UWFN. Pressure coming up the middle. McDaniels is going to throw a quick out to Martin on the side. Makes the first guy miss. You can get a face mask here. That's going to be a big 15 yards on top of the play. Yeah, and that's, that's an accidental face mask. Looks like over there by DeMaria Givens, who's replacing Sherrod Oliver at that cornerback position. As he went to tackle him, looks like his hand Ooh. got caught up. And you hate to see that. That hurts the Personal neck. Personal foul, face mask, defense number four, 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. They get Gail, Gael Laurent with that? Or it had to be Givens over there. I don't think it was Laurent that far to the sideline, but yeah, maybe the referee just got the wrong number. But that's huge. I mean, all of a sudden, you you know, you know attack on to the end of that play, and now you are just short of the red zone, in business on offense here. Ball will be marked at the 22. So with the 15 yards, that's 20 yards on that little quick out. Go back to the running game. Look at that, that cut and that misdirection. Underwood inside the 20, down to the 15. Give him seven on the carry on first down. Yeah, Underwood just, just making guys miss at this point. Trent Archie coming in, converging for the tackle, and you see there he just makes that jump cut at the end. Quick snap on second down. Underwood back into the middle of the line. Looks like he's going to get 
at least close to the first down. They may mark it and move yep. the chains. They will. That running game for West Alabama, they have it going right now. Yeah, they're punishing this Argos defense, and it just seems to be a look of scramble a little bit. The boys in blue here just trying to get their feet under them and catch their breath to start the second half. That's, that's going to help. Nice job of just closing the middle of that and getting a hold of Underwood before he can go anywhere. And if you, if you can get your hands on him early, you can make something happen. You just got, can't let him get into space. Good job in the middle. Yeah, nice job. Looked like Miles Meyer was in there yeah. on that tackle there with a host of defenders able to get him behind the line of scrimmage or, or hold him to no gain. Ferguson, Cox got in there as well. Uh, good job up front by this defense of Andrew Wilcox. And it, you're right, though. It was Myers who slowed him down with the initial push enough to – end up with a loss of one on the play. They'll go back to the run. He bounces to the outside. This is the second back in there, Smith. And Smith makes a couple guys miss and gets inside the five-yard line down to the four. Big run. That'll bring up a third and two. Big play here. Give him nine on that run. And they're going to go back to the quick snap again, and there's flags flying. That may help. I'm not quite sure if they move too quick. Or they're just not getting, and this may have been what Shinnick was talking about, Coach Shinnick coming off the field as he was, as I mentioned before half, really in heated discussion with the officials. And we still had a player for UWF being substituted on the yeah. field when they snapped that ball. So this may be, be against West Alabama not giving UWF, like you mentioned earlier, time to substitute their players in. And I'm wondering, I, I was kind of in the back of my mind thinking as I was watching Coach Shinnick talk to the officials coming off the field. We'll, we'll break here for the call. Prior to the play, Illegal substitution, defense, mm. half the distance to the goal. It will result, half the distance will result in a first down. Wow, costly penalty. So now fresh set of downs, ball basically point blank range and four, four shots at it. I wondered if, if that's what Coach Shinnick was talking about, is hey, you're not giving us enough time to substitute. And in this case, did West Alabama just not substitute somebody? It's hard to say. They're supposed to be watching that. Ball at the two. Big play up the middle. That defense comes up with a big time stop on first down. And you see it right there in the middle of that line. TJ Kelly, first one to get home there mm -hmm. on, on uh, Demetrius Battle, the big man, not able to go anywhere. Gael Laurent getting in there too, throwing his weight into the tackle, as was Durante Jordan. And you got to have that on first down. They're going to lose two, back it up to the four yard line. You love that Kelly just uh, slipped his lineman and was right there basically about the same time the ball was handed off. So here you go, three receivers out to the left. Second down for the four. Run pass option is in play. Here comes some pressure. They're going to go up top, and this one's basically just thrown away. Nice job by Givens over there on the coverage on Salisbury. They were trying to get Salisbury in, that, in, a, in, a, in a fade route. Excellent play, excellent coverage over there by Demaria Givens. And it looks like West Alabama had a little bit of mis miscommunication on that, right, all, all, on that route also. Yeah, you'd love to see that. Maybe the previous play with the big stop on the running play kind of threw them out of whack a little bit. Here we go. Huge third down. Third down. We saw this last week against Valdosta a couple times from about this distance. They were able to hold him to a field goal. Can this Argo defense come up with something similar here? Salisbury in motion across the set. It's going to be a dump to battle in the flat. You're going to have to get him on the ground. He makes a couple guys miss, and then you're not making that guy miss. Nice job, Daryl Wilson. Let the big dog eat. And he lets you know about it when he gets up from that tackle. Great job. Initially thought Trent Archie had a, t a shot to tackle him. Again, got over in. <laughs> He's met there by a host of defenders. That was face-to-face -face with Daryl Wilson. Great job by that defense holding up there, bending but not breaking. Yeah, they've done that in the red zone several times this season. So a uh, field goal, a short one. We're going to call it a 22-yarder with a chance to tie this football game. Big kicker is up, and it is through the uprights. Trey Jackson makes it count, and we are tied up. 27-27 to 27 is your score. Good football game here on the UWF Sports Network.
That's my dad. In this journey, we all have a role. Every life counts on you knowing yours. Alert today, alive tomorrow, because safety doesn't happen by accident. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Back with you here at Blue Wahoo Stadium, West Alabama and the University of West Florida. 27 to 27 is our score. 12 plays, 58 yards, almost five minutes off the clock for the Tigers. But how about this Argo defense? They withstand point blank range shots. And that defense comes up big, Jamie Smith, holding it to a field goal and keeping this football game, or actually tying this football game up. Here comes the kickoff. Fair catch is called for, although plenty of time to maybe put a return on there by Anthony Manning. And that may have been by design or, you know, Manning may have been told that by the coaches, go ahead and just fair catch it. So he doesn't have a lot of experience returning <laughs> kicks this year. They'll set up here on offense at the 25-yard line. And really, I mean, we've seen, we've seen a lot of really good offense in this game, and, and it may just be, Jamie, something like what we just saw where you've got the ball at the two-yard line and you're able to withstand and force a field goal by, by a defense, by this West Florida defense. Instead of giving up the seven there, you were able to hold them to three. And good to see Taylor Teo still in the ball game for West Florida. Yeah, we weren't sure if he'd come back or not. He took a hard shot to the, either the ribs or the kidney in the first half. Jaden Garner, big hole on the right side, dances through it, meets the defender, and then drags him about three or four extra yards. Good job. He's going to be close still to first going. down yardage. Turbo making something happen there. Jaden Gardner, tough run that time. Still going at the end of that run. Got a little push by the old line at the end, but you see it there. The jump cut, making a couple of the defenders miss and keeps those legs churning. They'll give him nine on that play. Yeah, Elston, Elston met him, and then Elston got moved. I'll tell you what, what a hole on the right side of the line over there by Jacob Bruce and Mike Dilla opening up like the Red Seas parting from Moses right there. That'll bring up a second and one. Nice job by Gardner dancing to his right after putting on the brakes. Gets through the hole. He'll pick up the first down and then some. And you see Gardner using that elusiveness there. Mm. Initially uh, was supposed to go to the left side. Jump cuts right back to the right. And a lot of running room. He'll have enough for the first down. Argo's in business. You know, this is really interesting because Jaden Gardner hadn't, I'm sure he hasn't had the number of carries he would like to have, local guy out of Pine Forest. But, we, Jamie, think back to that West Georgia game on a truly sloppy, slippery track. He was the guy that could keep his footing, had the big touchdown run to kind of get things going. Great throw here. And if that one leads him, he's galloping to the end zone. Rodney Coates is a little behind him, but a nice job of adjusting and making the catch. Yeah, a little bit behind Rodney Coates that time. Oh, he wow, had his he man open. beat. Man, he he was had open. his man beat on that play, and that's going to be number 10 in coverage over there, Caleb, yeah. Caleb Abram. Good for the first down right there. But I, back to, to Gardner, remember how he had that 17-yard touchdown run? Everybody else on the field is slipping. The way Jaden runs, he may be in business on this field with the turf the way it is and some of the slips we've seen. Give him 18 yards on the first down reception. Gardner back into the line. Makes a guy miss, makes another one miss, dances to the outside. And if he were to cut that up inside of Austin Reed, he might have had bigger yards. Yeah, and you just spoke about him able to skate from the, from the initial defender there. And uh, if, he, if, if he was able to keep his feet, we may be talking about a 20-yard gain or so for Jaden Gardner. Gage Kroll in the game at tight end, number 86. You see him there across your, your television screen. So we'll go back. Two wide receivers out to the right ball. On the left hash, Quentin Randolph, single receiver near his sideline. Anthony Johnson back in at the running back position. Second down and nine. Reed with time to throw. He's got a man curved to the middle, and he just can't come up with the catch. Rodney Coates, that was a touchdown. Nice throw there by Reed. Let him, let him, let him right to the exact spot where he needed to be. Rodney Coates just not able to bring it down. And and you can see on the replay there, perfect ball, nice protection. Just nice not, no nice little slide by Reed, and then he puts the ball on the money. 
Oh, a little bit off his fingertips. Now that I see it, although clearly they saw on the previous play yeah, that's how, a good throw. how open Coates was, and they went right back to it again. That's a good throw. you got to come down yeah, with that yeah, ball if you're you Roger go. Coates. Or if you touch it with two fingers, you got to make the catch. Maybe missed time to jump just a touch, too. But now a big play, third and nine, ball at the 42 of West Al. Great throw, great catch of dragging the toes. Quentin Randolph does it again. That's just solid receiving right there. You know what he's saying? Let's do it again. Come yeah. my way again. And he wants you to feed him Randolph. Just running an out route there in man coverage. Or he puts it right on the money. Tiptoeing on the sidelines. Picks up just enough for that first yeah, down. Right inside the 30 at the 29. So here you go. 13, I think, on the play. Yep, 13 yards. First down, Argos. Here we go. Moving the football down the field. Trying to answer the field goal from West Alabama. Quick throw. Into Kenneth Chanel, he's going to pick up a couple yards on first down. And, you know, just as good as the running game. That quick passing game, you pick up three, four, five yards, and you set yourself up on second down. Yeah, this is a two-step drop, three-step drop for Austin Reed and finds Chanel in that slot position. Letting Chanel work, picks up about nine on that play. Gardner back in at running back. They'll give him eight, I believe. It looks like about a second and two. What I like is the fact that if you do lose a Kevin Grant for this game, you're able to just plug in Q. Sometimes they're out there together, but Q can play that same role and give you that production. Keeper from Reed. Reed is going to try to run to the corner. Instead, he's going to throw it up. He's looking for Coach, but the good coverage this time over there on the side by Caleb Abram. Yeah, I think Reed realized I'm not going to be able to run it for this first down as he had a guy in space with him, so he just decided to throw it. By the way, we've got um, into the game. Willie Baker's getting some run here at wide receiver with some of the injuries that we're facing. Number 17 out on the field in that previous play. And over in coverage again, Abram, I was going to say nice defense, but didn't get that head turned around on Coates. And most of the time, that's a pass interference call. That's the second time we've seen the refs. Unfortunately, tonight is not that most call. of those times. <laughs> Here we go. Second down, third down, excuse me, and two. Reed, quick throw, and that's all you need. Get the yards you need for the first down. Move those chains. Quentin Randolph coming up big on this drive. Two big catches. That's the second there. And just a quick drop back and throw for Reed. Finds Randolph, who's been super reliable tonight. All I got to say is, how about Quentin Randolph? The guy can go up and make the spectacular catch, but now you're seeing the other side of Quentin because they need it, running those sharp routes, making the key catches that, that we see Tate make a lot of the times. It, you know, you can't take away one thing because the other one will get you. Yeah, I mean, why not continue to go to him? I mean, he's got two touchdowns already on the night. He's got the single side of the field here again. Anthony Johnson in at running back. They'll go to Johnson, to the right. He's got a blocker out in front, tries to cut it back. Boy, takes some punishment, deals out a little bit as well, picks up a couple. Yeah, nice job there by Johnson, getting the defense to kind of over-pursue, push that right foot in the ground, able to cut it back up before he's stopped there by, by Gaddis and a host of defenders, able to pick up about three. What an impressive drive here to answer. First drive of the second half for this offense. They are moving the chains. They're running it. They are throwing it. And the long drive. Off to a good start. Yeah, they started at the 25 after the fair catch, so they've, they've definitely answered. On second and eight, Reed with the throw, and the ball comes loose. Rodney Coates having a tough one over there. That one, I know he had a defender on him, but that's one you got to make. Yeah, you got to make that catch. He's covered over there by Williamson. Just a back shoulder throw. Everything is oh, perfect that, right up until the catch there. Jamie, that's pass interference, too. The, the defender has, he had his right arm, so Rodney couldn't get his right arm free before the ball got there. The defender had him by the right arm, or Rodney at least can get his hands to it, but trying to make a one-handed catch while fighting off a defender is a tough one. Maybe he could have fought through it a little bit more, but again, no help out there from the official who was right on top of it. So third down and eight now, ball at the 13 in the red zone. Williams, with all kinds of time, delivers it. Touchdown. Rodney Coates comes right back and makes a diving catch. Argos back in front. And what a makeup catch there by Rodney Coates. Had a tough two, a tough drive up until that point. Reed steps up in the pocket, gives his man some time to run his route. On time, Rodney Coates coming up big for the touchdown. 13-yard touchdown. And I got to say this, man, you got to love this kid, Austin Reed. Nothing seeming to bother him. Feels the pressure coming, and we went from a, a guy who was like a, a Labrador puppy at one point to looking like Tom Brady now, the way he's sliding around in the pocket. Big extra point coming. 
Austin Williams on, missed his last one. This one, the hold is good, snap. Everything is coming together right down the middle. Bangs this one through. Argos back in front. 33-27 the score. They lead this thing with 5.09 to play here in the third quarter right here on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at penair.org slash about us. For those who sweat in determined pursuit, and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile, and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. What's even better than going to a UWF football game? Going with all your friends. Decks are available for groups between 25 and 200 people. All group decks come with a UWF football game ticket, food, and soft drinks. It's great for company outings, group functions, birthday parties, and youth groups. Prices start as low as $25 per person. Call 850-474-2746 for more information or to book your deck today. Patient or call 429-1777. Back here at Blue Wahoo Stadium, 5.09 left in the third quarter of a great football game. 34-27 is the score. Now Argos back out in front of the West Alabama Tigers. That last drive by the University of West Florida offense, 12 plays, 75 yards, 4.56 off the clock, and it's capped by a 13-yard Austin Reed to Rodney Coates touchdown catch. Here's the kick, Austin Williams putting it up in the air again, like Jamie was just saying in the last kick, clearly designed to try to limit the big return. Unfortunately, it will not this time. As getting to the outside and trying to make a couple guys miss, he's going to end up out by the 40, out near the 40-yard line. That is number four. I'm not sure if that's the linebacker, Michael Anderson, or if that is the wide receiver, Jarek Orr. I'll assume it's Orr <laughs> yeah, and probably, not the linebacker. Probably Jarek Orr. Nice not spin able to contain there. Him wow. there. You thought of that tackle. Two spins. Make a bunch of guys miss. They put the May tag on them. A little hesitation and everything. They got, there's some athletes on this West Alabama team. Jamie Smith, all we wanted was a nice, quiet night with a blowout win. It ain't happening, bro. Nah, <laughs> not going to happen tonight. They're going to make it interesting. It may, it may still be a blowout, but it, at least so far it has not been quiet. McDaniels throwing on first down, gets it out there to the outside. And again, you see the athleticism of some of these players from West Alabama. This one's going to pick up six or seven yards. Martin with the catch out there. Yeah, Martin, who's had a big night so far for them. Five catches for about 80 yards now tonight. With that one, he'll go over that 80 yard mark. But just, uh, I mean, they just have a lot of athletes. And it kind of reminds me of a Valdosta State team who had a bunch of athletes on their side as well. They give him six, second and four, run into the middle of the line. A little bit short. He's going to fall forward for maybe three. Yeah, mark him about a yard short of the first down yardage. Wow, big, big third down. Shadivis can get off here. Here it comes, and again, here comes the quick snap. So the Argos just having to stay with their personnel on the field. Nice job of collapsing that run pretty quickly, but he's going to get enough, just enough. Give him the 50-yard line to pick up the first down. Yeah, and West Alabama likes to do that. They get that offense up to the line quick going tempo and gets just enough for that first down. You can't take a nap. Quentin Peebles, Chandler Ferguson on the tackle there. But, yeah, you got to get right back out there and get your defense set. I know this is difficult, and it may be taking Coach Darian Doolin, the defensive coordinator for West Florida, out of kind of what he wants to do. But that's what good offense does is try to put the defense in to positions they don't, they're uncomfortable with. And that time they give it to their back again. And uh, Underwood able to find some running room out to the left side. Picks up four. I'm really impressed with the way the kind of hesitation at the beginning of a lot of these runs and the ability to wait for holes to open and kind of find your space. Second and six now. This offensive line has been good. McDaniels looking to throw out to 
God, good second, third effort from this receiver out there, but that's, uh, once again, Bailey Blanchard. And that'll move the sticks. Nice job of delivering that football, and then Blanchard just, he's not going to go down easy. Yeah, and Archie has the flat on that. Just late getting over there yeah. on that throw, Archie was, or maybe had a child at the pick, but but uh, McDaniels makes a nice throw, and they have another first down. Archie and David Richardson, Trent and David involved on that one. So now first down ball at the 40. A little pressure up the middle and running right behind it is Underwood again. That's going to be a gain of maybe three on first down. And that time, Chandler Ferguson coming in on the blitz, filling a couple holes there. Kedrick Bradley involved on that tackle as well. They'll give him four to bring up a second and six. You see a lot of hands on the hips. This defense is, is tired. It's the pace, really. It's not that they've been on the field so long. It's just when this West Alabama team starts driving, they are – Rolling the plays off fast and furious. McDaniels with time to throw. He's got a man in the middle of the field. It's the big tight end. And Boyd is inside the five after the big catch. And just he's too big to let run loose. Somebody lost him in coverage. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a linebacker. I think that was Kendrick Bradley who had the seam on that route over there with Quay Boyd. Got behind him. Give him 32 on the play inside the five. And they're right back where they were on the last drive. This time, Underwood. Looked like he had it for a second. Down to the one, but they were able to bring him down before he could find the end zone. And West and West Dallas probably going to go tempo yeah, here. tempo again as the ball's at the one. The one-yard line. 33 yards on the completion, a couple yards on that run. And they stop him again. They, they do. They're going to say no. Nice job by the defense swarming on that. Still fighting for extra yardage is Underwood, but he's going to be a little bit short. One of the offensive linemen holding the football. Of course, it came out way after the play ended. Not quite the same situation as an earlier West Florida touchdown. Now, there is a substitution as Underwood is coming off, so the Argos should be given the opportunity to run some guys off and on, and they do at least one on the defensive line. You're basically point-blank range here, third and one. They go to the big back. Battle is in the game. Demetrius Battle, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you're going to see a handoff here. He's going to be stopped. And he never got the snap. He fumbled it. He never got I mean, the handoff. He never got the handoff. That ball was on the ground. And he, big Darrell Wilson comes yeah, up with the ball. Yeah, big D. Darrell Wilson comes up with it. Pants falling off and everything. I love it. And he fumbled. He was the first one in on that tackle, and it came out right off of, off of Darrell Wilson's helmet. It looked like he never actually got the, the – maybe had control of the handoff, did he? Because I could see McDaniel started running in as soon as, you know, as soon as the transaction wasn't complete, you could see him kind of firing in there. Man, what about that? Defense comes up big again. Huge. And that's really, you know, the turnovers. We haven't had the turnovers. That's the first one uh, other than the interception. That's twice. I, I take that back now. Two big turnovers deep in Argo territory by this West Alabama offense. That's costly in a game like this where points are at a premium. You, you mean, you, and by that I mean everybody's scoring them. You can't afford to come away with nothing there. Even a field goal would have at least got you back to a four-point game. 34-27 from their own one. Johnson hits the hole hard. He's going to drag some defenders for eight yards on the first down carry. That moves it off the goal line. Nice burst there by Johnson and great push there by Gibson, Dilla, and Bruce on that right side, able to create running room, and he picks up about seven. Yeah, they'll give him about seven. Great second effort, and really, you saw the burst as he found the hole and then just really hit it hard. Anthony Johnson and Jaden Gardner both having to step up with Javon Newton out to start the game, Shamari Mason getting injured early on. You're seeing these two backs say, I'm next and I'm ready. Johnson again. This time, though, he tries to break it outside. He's going to lose a couple. That that play, the whole other side of the field was open. Austin Reed's kicking himself. If he would have kept that ball, he's running for a long way. Yeah, Reed had a lot of daylight on that play, but uh, hindsight's always 20-20. Gave it to Johnson there, and maybe I thought Johnson had some room to maybe run up the middle and pick up a couple yards, but loses about two on that. The instincts are strong to give the ball to the ball carrier to throw it but sometimes with your Austin Reed you're a heck of an athlete keep that ball make something happen so this becomes big here third and five third and four depending on where the spot is you you want to get some yards you want to get a first down and move this thing we're going to throw here quick out to Karan Ashley he's got enough for the first down I would think yes across the line move those chains nice job by the big thin fella. And what a catch by Karan Ashley. I yes, mean, sir. He knew had, he was going to take a hit. Had some struggles in these recent weeks, but comes up big there. 
Got to love it again. Down, You're down Kevin Grant as we wind down to the end of the third quarter. You're down KG. Somebody's got to step up. Karan Ashley right into that role. We've seen that happen a couple times this season. That'll end quarter number three. Argos on top, 34-27. Impressive defensively with a stop right at the goal line. And they're keeping it moving here out of their own end with a big first down, the ball just outside the 10 at the 11. We saw this, Jamie, a couple weeks ago. Was that North Greenville? Yeah, it was North Greenville where they did that. They came up with the ball on the one, and we said it. I'm going to say it again because it worked then. We'll see if it works now. Wouldn't a 99-yard drive be nice right about now? That would be ideal. And uh, they got it going definitely with the Gron Ashley catch, the Anthony Johnson burst at the end on that one where uh, they were backed up against it there. But, I mean, what about that defense? I want to give credit to them again, just coming up big on the – I mean, the nose of the football is at the end zone there and able to come up huge with another turnover, showing why they are one of the top defenses in the nation. I got to tell you, uh, Daryl Wilson, who we had on one of our pregame shows, you know, was, our, was our interview, our spotlight, a senior, you know, honored senior night with a lot of – with, you know, 27 or 26 of his teammates earlier – uh, the fact that Daryl Wilson, he's just been dominant tonight. We've seen him come up big time. T.J. Kelly as well. But really, Daryl Wilson creating havoc, making plays happen. It's been, it's been tremendous to watch. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Welcome back here to Blue Wahoo Stadium in Pensacola, Florida, as we are set for the fourth quarter of this game, whale of a football game, 34-27 Argonauts on top of the West Alabama Tigers from their own 11, first down. They're going to go to Jaden Gardner. Gardner dances around. Did he fumble that football at the end? This could be huge. They did not say he was down if West Alabama recovered, and you can see Devin Gibson clapping his hands, unfortunately. A turnover answered by a turnover. Gardner fumbles up, coughs up the football. West Alabama back in business inside the 10 offensively. That's huge, Jamie. Yeah, I think that's just the instance of Gardner trying to do too much there. Uh, trying to bounce it out to the outside. West Alabama played that beautifully and uh, just not able to hold it on, uh, or hold yeah. on to the ball at the end as he has it stripped away. You see it right there, and he tried to fight to get it and just couldn't as he was getting pulled back. And so one of the white shirts comes up with it here. It's going to be interesting now. Can this defense turn around and come up with another stop, with another stand? Ball at the nine-yard line, so can't get a first down here. This defense at least got to come off the field and get a little bit of a break with a couple of plays offensively and then the quarter break as well, which is a little long. So McDaniels going up top to Mary Givens. 
fighting out on the outside. Nice job, nice coverage, and he did turn his head back and made sure Bailey Blanchard, number 89, could not come up with that catch. Yeah, nice job by Givens. Has one or man coverage over there with Blanchard and finds the ball, locates it, which is the most important thing. Here we go. Big play. Second down and nine. This defense, you're asking them to do it again. Do they have it in them? Got to feel like they do. They've been sensational down in this part of the field all season long. Second down to nine. McDaniels with lots of time to throw. He hasn't, does not have anybody open. He's going to run. Going to take a big hit at the end of this play. Down inside the five at about the two or the three. But he picks up maybe six on the carry. A nice job of closing him out. But really covering up everybody. Nowhere to go. Chandler Ferguson gets in there. Kendrick Bradley and then Henry Montgomery coming up with a big pop at the end of this one. Yeah, nice job. Now big third down. Big third down in here. Uh, have to wonder if you can get him off the field or hold him to a field goal attempt. There's a lot going on here with West Alabama talking over to the sideline. Got ten play seconds. clock is down to 10. They may have to take a timeout here. We'll see if they can get something launched before this play clock winds yeah, down. And they're going to take a timeout. They yeah, they don't like what's going on here at all. By the way, hey, Whataburger fans, if you love mushrooms, then you're going to love hearing this. The mushroom Swiss burger is now an all-time favorite. Made hot and fresh with two all-beef patties, two slices of Swiss, two layers of prilled premium grilled mushrooms, and a creamy au jus sauce available whenever the craving strikes. We'll take another break here with the two teams. 13.58 to play, 34.27 on the UWF Sports Network. That's my daughter. In this journey, we all have a role. Every life counts on you knowing yours. Alert today, alive tomorrow, because safety doesn't happen by accident. Here we go, third and three, third and goal <laughs> from the three-yard line. Can this Argos defense come up with another stand, another stop? West Alabama, can they even this game up? New quarterback in after the big hit on McDaniels. They're going to go to battle. Battle puts his head down. He's going to fight for the goal line. Does he get there? Yes, they're going to say he broke the plane with the football. Touchdown, West Alabama. But after that hard pop, they had to go to Jacob Murphy at quarterback, but it's the big fella. Demetrius Battle getting just enough. I thought they had him, Jamie. Yeah, initially thought they had him. I think it was a stretch at the end of that run where he extends his elbow right oh. after he gets past yeah, get, there. Gael Laurent, yep. Gael Laurent was trying to fight with that football. Maybe an opportunity to knock it out, but they kept him on his feet long enough where he was able to do that. So the answer is no. No stand and no stop this time. On for the PAT is Trey Jackson. A chance to tie this football game here in the fourth quarter. Kick is up. Kick is into the net. It is good. Woo! 34-34 is our score. 13.50 left to play in this one. Argos and the Tigers are all tied right here on the UWF Sports Network. Real change occurs in that split second. A moment of connection among people with a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? 
The University of West Florida. No limits. There's nothing quite like coming together over a fresh cooked meal. Face to face, burger to burger, solving the world's problems over fries. There's also nothing like solving the problems right in front of you, like baseball practice, swim team, and getting your family's meals just like they like it, all with a few taps on your phone. Yeah, good thing there's more than one way to solve the world's problems. Good thing there's Whataburger. For those who sweat in determined pursuit, and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile, and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Sky's Pizza on Davis Highway. Back with your Blue Wahoo Stadium, Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith. Another scoring drive as this has been a back and forth game. And we are tied at 34-34. West Alabama short field this time after trading turnovers by the two teams. The Tigers punch one in by the slimmest of margins. That one, three plays, nine yards, a minute off the clock, and we are tied at 34s. So UWF back on offense again. This one angled kick down the sidelines. It's going to go out of bounds. That will set the Argos up with some decent field position. Puncher's thing, Jamie, it's like a heavyweight fight, just trading trading big blows, and it's kind of like, can you limit the mistakes? And we were saying that it had been a clean game as far as turnovers for this Argo team until that fumble by, by Jaden Gardner. Yeah, and that one's going to be on Jaden Gardner. You hate to turn the ball over in your own territory, and so close uh, to the end zone uh, was Gardner when he gave that ball uh, to West Alabama, and pretty much a gift there. But let's see if Austin Reed can march this offense back down for another score. You said it, uh, Jamie. It was one of those situations where he was fighting, you know, second and third effort and just didn't protect the football and lost it. So starting at your own 35, not a bad spot to be. They'll go into the middle of the line. Anthony Johnson with the carry on first down, falls forward for a few yards. Yeah, and the first turnover of the game for the offense. And that's, you hate for it to come at that time, but it did. It had been a while after, you know, all those turnovers at the beginning of the North Greenville game. Clean game last week against Valdosta. And it played, you know, basically another three quarters before turning one over. That'll bring up a second and seven. Gain of three on first down. Margo's looking to answer. Good throw. And it's tipped away at the last second. That ball just in the air a little too long. Garon Ashley was open but just couldn't get it over the outstretched. Hands and over there, that was number 10. We called his name a lot tonight, Caleb Abram. Good job here of just closing on that football. If not, that's a big completion. Yeah, and he just sees it at the last moment uh, before it gets to Garon Ashley, or else Ashley gets that catch for a first down. Brings up a third and seven. Argos dial another one up here to move these chains and, and keep possession of this football. Two receivers out. On the far side, good throw, good catch. Tate Latio banged up hard. This kid's been fighting injuries all year, and yes, the, is the answer to my question. Move those chains. First down, Argos. Great route, great throw. Oh, reliable. Tate Latio, the classic, the out route from that slot position, and it's really nothing you can do with Latio once he get in the once he gets in the good position there. Give him 12 yards. Give us the first down. Ball is out at midfield, right on the 50. The Argos looking to move that thing into West Alabama territory. This offense has been solid tonight, moving the ball pretty much at will. First down play. Reed steps forward in the pocket. He's looking deep. He's got a man. It's Quentin Randolph. Touchdown, Argos. How about that? A 50-yard bomb. I love Quentin Randolph. And you and 40 more thousand people in the stadium right now, Quentin Randolph. Showing the Jets on this play. Just nothing special, a go route, and he beats this man by about three steps and clean into the end zone. This guy is special, 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 fighting through so much in his career. They said the word for this week was crucial. Quentin Randolph has been crucial in this game. 
And I feel sorry for the uh, ROTC guys <laughs> having to punch out these. <laughs> yeah, 50 yards on the bomb. Somebody may be doing 50 push-ups before we're done. There's a flag on the field. Let's see what this is. Back out about the 35-yard line. I assume this is on West Alabama. Yeah, you is certainly not in the holding. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 65, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 7. That is both players' first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Devin Gibson Five. and Jordan Jones getting into it. Those will offset. But uh, obviously when the play was over, and again, we've seen this throughout, Jamie. There's been a lot of jawing, and, and most of it has been started by the team with the red helmets, but you got to stay away from it if you're one of the kids in the white helmets. Regardless, 50-yard touchdown, throw and catch. Austin Reed to Quentin Randolph. Austin Williams on for a big PAT. Chance to put his team back up seven. Snap good, hold good. Kick is up, it is through. 41-34 is our score. Argos answer and come right back. We'll keep it right here through this. Is, yeah, here it comes, Jamie. Somebody's going to do some push-ups, and they're going to do 41 of them, and they're going to be tired when all is said and done. Maybe what, more to come. What a night right here we've got going offensively for, for Austin Reed, for one, but Quentin Randolph as well. You want to talk about a quick drive. Four plays, 65 yards, buck 24 off the clock. You get the 50-yard touchdown strike. 2Q, and looking at these stats here, how about Austin Reed? First half, he was sensational, only two incompletions. 26 of 37 now, 70% completions, 404 yards, five touchdown throws, and Quentin Randolph has three of those TD catches. He's at six catches, a buck 32, right about his average of about 22 yards a catch. Yeah, Quinn Randolph, the, definitely the big play guy tonight. And coming up, crucial. Like you said, the key word for this week was crucial. And Quentin Randolph has been every every bit of that. That's, you know, saying something. When your defense goes out there, they hold and force a turnover. You fumble the football back. The other team gets a touchdown after, uh, you know, scratching and clawing by your defense to keep a big back out of the end zone. But your offense comes right back out. This is a team that's all in sync together. Offense picks right back up, goes down the field, boom, gets the lead right back. You love to see this. Not what we wanted as far as how exciting this thing is. I'm glad I took my blood pressure meds this morning, Jamie Smith. Aren't we all? Should have maybe taken an extra one. <laughs> Here's the kick again, directional. Nice job. This one down to about the two-yard line. Return is on, and you see the speed from this West Al team. This time a good job of corralling the return man. Right about the 15, 16-yard line. That, that's how they drew it up. That's how it's supposed to happen as far as a coverage standpoint. Yeah, nice job coming down the line there, and he had nowhere to go on that, on that, uh, on that kick. We see you, Q. We see you, Quentin Randolph. There you go, bud. Play it. <laughs> 29, chill out down on the sideline. It's been big. We'll see. We got a chance for West Alabama to get back on the field here, and, and it looks like – Jack McDaniels will come back at quarterback. He took that hard shot down near the goal line on the previous possession, came out for the play, for the touchdown play, but McDaniels is back. He's having a good game as well. Handoff into the middle of the line is James Smith in at running back. He's going to dive forward, pick up four or five on the first down carry. And you got to wonder if you can keep West Alabama maybe a turnover on downs here. Uh, they haven't passed the ball a lot tonight. So that may, if you can score more points here, say and put up another touchdown, it's going to force them to do some things that they're not used to doing. Now they've got, the, they've got some horses out there they can throw the football to. In fact, all four of them on the field, including the big tight end. He's just massive, boy. They're going to swing one out of the backfield to Smith, and Smith's going to pick up the first down before getting out of bounds over in front of his bench. Nice job on the little screen. Give him a gain of probably about six. Yeah, a little, said and done. a little swing pass out here to, to James Smith, the smallest of their running back stable, and he's able to pick up enough for the first down. That's a tough one, yeah. 5'8", 161 with his feet to ask, you know, Kedrick Bradley to break down and, and stop it in the open field, but that's what you got to do. Some tough running here off the left side. So this looks like it's Smith's possession as he's going to fall forward and get a gain of about four on first down the ball out across the 30 now. Yeah, and you can see Montgomery made the tackle on that play, but kind of surprised as he didn't see Smith as he snuck behind those big old lines.
McDaniels looking to throw. He's got all kinds of time. Is that not a hold? Quentin Peebles is being held all over the field and no flag. I mean, right here on your camera, I know radio you can't see it, but Quentin Peebles, the offensive lineman, has got two fistfuls of jersey. He throws his arms up and says, what's going on here? Yeah, a lot yeah, of time. Yeah, right, I mean, right here. A lot of time. A lot of time wow. for, for McDaniels to throw the ball. He ends up throwing it away. Good job by the secondary. Yeah. Unbelievable right now. And, again, with a chippy game, from an officiating standpoint, if you're going to let people play like that, you're going to have some trouble. Smith through the line. He's going to pick up big yards. Another first down on a big carry after the incompletion. I know it's a lot of frustration, obviously, if you're this defense and you, you make a play, you feel like you have an opportunity on that previous pass on the third down that they gave him the first down catch. I mean, you got to be wondering at this point, what do we need to do? And Duncan had a shot, look at the look like at the line of scrimmage to bring down Smith on that play. Squeaks out for a big gain on that play. Yeah, ball is now into the Argonaut end of the field. Give him 21. Yeah, big carry down to the 38 yard line. Nice play here. And he almost looked like he almost dropped that ball. Yeah. Smith did when he made that spin move. That'll bring Underwood back onto the field. Wow, that would have been big. Just as deadly. When he made that back. spin yeah. move there, it looked like he lost the ball for a moment had, but got it back. Kind of had to reset it a little bit. Give him a loss of one on the first down carry. We are under 10 to play. In fact, 9-15 or so now. 41-34 the score. Argos out seven in front here. And this one's going to be a quick completion out to Martin on the side. Enough for a first down, I think. It looks like he picked up the necessary yardage or is he a little short? Still moving the chains here. Yeah, no, it looks like he's quite a bit short, actually, but when he finally went out of bounds, kind of hard to tell About right in front yards. of the sidelines there. Yeah, third and one. And they're going to go quick back into that line. It looks like they'll have enough to get the first down. So Underwood falls forward. And it looks like he'll just get enough. And all he needed was one. It looks like he got the one. They'll move the chains. First down, Tigers. And got we got an offensive hurt. lineman down. Got, maybe got rolled up on top of each other, actually. But this is, uh, this is a big drive as we're – under the nine-minute mark now, as it may be. And I, you know, Brian Henry, I think he was joking, I think, with Pete Shinnick at halftime as we went. He said, is this going to be a game of whoever has the ball last wins? And it's kind of shaping up that way here in the late going, Jamie. Definitely is. I mean, you've seen two offenses who are clicking on all cylinders right now. And uh, two heavyweight fighters really going at it. Can a defense, and in this case the, the Argonaut defense, come up with a way to get off the field here and even if it's a field goal at this point, I, you almost feel like you're going to have to score touchdowns to stay in this game if you're West Alabama, the way the Argonaut offense is clicking as well. So uh, this is big. It's not just about, you know, forcing a punt. It's at this point, you know, can you hold them here deeper into your own end? Ball at the 27-yard line here as they've cleaned up the injuries and we're set to go. Another first down for West Alabama. McDaniel's looking to pass. He does that little shoulder fake again, goes to the middle of the field, and hello, Chandler Ferguson is right there as soon as Underwood pulls in that completion. Yeah, nice job there by Ferguson. Had that sniffed out from the get-go. And that looks like McDaniel's only option, but he maybe picks up one as Ferguson came up and cleaned him. Looks like they're giving him a no gain. I don't think they've moved the marker at all. So we'll call it second and ten. Good play on first down. Nice job of covering and not letting a, a dangerous runner get loose after the short catch. Argos with the three up front. Duncan's coming off the corner, gets in there, but right behind him they go to Salisbury and they can't get him to the ground. DeAnthony Bell had a shot at him. Instead, he's going to pick up first down yardage, and that's that that hurts right there defensively. You had the pressure coming from the corner, and Jamie, you've talked about it. They go right behind it. Yeah, and that's their that's their big play guy tonight over a small or Salisbury able to get behind the defense and picks up another first down. Here's the worst part: you're gonna you're gonna look at that, and it's the missed tackles tonight in a couple cases that have really hurt this defense. You get them on the ground right there, you're forcing a third down. Instead, you're inside the red zone now. Ball at the 16. Can this Argo defense inside this part of the field come up with another stop, at least to hold to a field goal? McDaniels with all kinds of time to throw. There's big Darrell Wilson chasing him out of the pocket. Can he close down on him? McDaniels is just going to get forced out of bounds as Chandler Ferguson gets to him. And that's good. That's good football there. Yeah. That's good football. That was inbounds. There's yep. no doubt about it. And you know what? McDaniels was looking to try to get pick up another yard or two before he went out of bounds. And that's the that's the price and the risk you run as a quarterback. 
instead of just stepping out. So, yeah, good football all the way around. Yeah, Ferguson pursuing him and Darrell Wilson right behind him. And you can see he's still going upfield as uh, Ferguson is in pursuit. Not sure about that spot. It looked like he may have lost a yard. Instead, they'll give him a no gain because it looked like when he extended the ball, he was already out of bounds. Either way, second down and 10 from the 16-yard line. Tough angle for us here where we sit up in this baseball press box. McDaniel's looking to pass again. Here comes the pressure. He's just got to throw that away. That's got to be grounding. He's still in the pocket. There it is. Finally. I, and here, I mean, again, it's a home broadcast in some senses of it. How does it take that long for that flag to come out? That, that, there's no doubt about the fact that's grounding. He never leaves the pocket. But great job, by the way, Jamie. That pressure up the middle in his face before anybody knew, before McDaniels knew anything about what was happening. Yeah, McDaniels just uh, made a wrong decision there, but he'll have to pay for it with the grounding penalty. I uh, believe it's about 10, 15 yards there. Did he even get it? I mean, I don't know what McDaniels is arguing here. I don't think the ball got back to the line of scrimmage anyways, and he wasn't outside the tackles. And Coach Shinnick letting the refs know yeah. about it as well. But no one in that area. Oh, yeah. No one in that area when he threw that ball away. The quarterback was still in the pocket. Intentional grounding. Loss of down. Third down. So you back it up. Lose the down. That's a big play because, I mean, again, 36 is the long this season for Trey Jackson. So you may be kind of flirting with his field goal range at this point, especially if you can come up with something big here on this third down play. That's a huge penalty. That'll pick him back 15. Yeah, 15 yards. So now all of a sudden you're looking at a, a third and 25. Defensively, this is it, man. You've got to come up with a stop here. You cannot let the fish off the hook at this point of the trip. Good stun up front. Here comes some pressure. McDaniels is rolling out. Oh, he's getting, getting a man downfield. He dumps it out. And Thought nice they job. had a shot at him. A great job of closing in and not giving that man any room to run. But here's the question. Was that enough to get back into field goal range? And here comes the field goal team, and it was. If you could come up with a sack there, you'd probably hold them to no points. But that's still a W by the defense. Absolutely. I mean, able to hold them, get them off the field, and hold them to a field goal attempt. Great job. Great I thought job. Andrew Wilcox, as quickly as he was closing, big number 96 was going to get to him before he could throw it or right as he threw it. But instead, that brings on Trey Jackson. Hard for me to see the spot here. We'll call it a 39-yarder a maybe. I'm not quite sure. And it's good regardless. Gets it, gets it down there. Good kick. Trey Jackson gets it through. So that it closes the lead to 41-37. Argonauts on top of West Alabama here on the UW. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. That's my mommy. In this journey, we all have a role. Every life counts on you knowing yours. Alert today, alive tomorrow, because safety doesn't happen by accident. We're back with you here. What a football game we've got going. 6.08 left to play here in the fourth quarter. 41-37, Argonauts on top of the Tigers. UWF leads West Alabama. It may come down to who has the football last because points are fast and furious in this one. Here's another deep kick. Fair catch is called for and made. Argonauts will start 
in decent field position at their own 25. So, Jamie, you feel like it's just going to be a matter of possessions and making sure you get something out of each and every possession. That last drive, 16 plays, 62 yards, and it ends with a 39-yard field goal. So for 16 plays and 62 yards, I agree with you, Jamie. That's a win for this defense to keep them out of the end zone because a lot of time went off the clock, and you know you ran six minutes and 18 seconds off and didn't come up with seven. For sure, and you still control the ball game on the, on, if you're the Argos. Here we go, first down from the 25-yard line. Do they have another couple big plays in them in this ball game? We've seen it early on. They'll run right back into the middle of this senior-led offensive line. Anthony Johnson falls forward for maybe a gain of two on first down. And you just feel like you know it's in the pocket. We've seen it time and time again tonight. They've got the big throws in there. And Pete Shinnick calling the plays as the head coach is super aggressive. And I, you got a feeling like it's just like hit them with a, with a quick jab and then come with the haymaker. And if you can have a drive like last time where you knocked off about five minutes off the clock, that would be ideal in this situation here for UWF. Although we'll take a, a bomb to cue at this point, too. It doesn't really matter, right? Just give me seven one way or another. Here we go. Second down and nine or eight. We're going back to Q again. Q makes the catch. What a throw. Defender kind of slipped, but just threading the needle is Austin Reed and Quentin Randolph again. He's going to be up near 150 yards at this point. Yeah, Quentin Randolph giving Xavier Williamson all he can handle over there at that cornerback position. Uh, just a back shoulder throw, Quentin, with a nice catch yet again. Yeah, absolutely. 21 yards, and that will put him over a buck 50 for the game. Out to the 48 yard line. Big chunk of real estate, and Argos are back in business with another first down. And Austin Reed probably having one of his best ball games of the year. Absolutely. That is the 24th first down in this ball game for this Argonaut offense. They haven't needed too many of them. West Alabama has 31, but it's mainly been because of the big plays. Chunking up the field in a hurry. Johnson back. Falls down on that Argo logo in the middle of the field, that Argy head, which, by the way, people love. Everywhere I go, when you got it on your jersey or your shirt or whatever it is, people are asking, who is that logo? What is that logo? It's kind of like, Jamie, who is that man? Mama, who is that man? Yeah. Love the Argos. There you go. Fall, again, falling forward, picking up about three yards. And so positive yards on first down. There's that guy, Quentin Randolph. There go that man. Let's see. He's over with Tate Latio on one side. You got two receivers on the other side of the field as well. Ball basically in the middle between the hashes. All kinds of room to operate. Austin Reed keeps this time. We said earlier, if he could get around the corner, he's going to have some room to run. He does. It's good for a first down. You live, you learn, and you come back, and you do it differently the next time. There you go. Austin Reed takes the, takes the option on there and has daylight, plenty of daylight out in front. And he went to slide, too, before having yeah, rough tackle Terrence Jones on his back. On but, there. again, you're not getting anything tonight, apparently. Yeah, picks up the first down. Great decision there by Austin Reed. And that clock, that clock continues to tick. Under four minutes to go now, in fact. And ball at the 38-yard line. Argos continuing to move and drive this football down the field. This offense has just been able to kind of do whatever they wanted to tonight, both in the running and passing game. But really, it has been through the air that they've done the most of the damage. Jaden Gardner back to it again. He's going to get wrapped up by Levi Hammock and taken to the ground. Yeah. Levi Hammock's a, a defensive lineman, 6'8", 280. He's a fire hydrant. And the most important thing for Gardner right there is just hold on to the ball because the clock continues to tick. You're putting together a decent drive here. Just hold on to that ball if you're Gardner. Absolutely. West Alabama, by the way, their timeout situation, they have two left. Had to burn one earlier on some confusion down near the goal line. The Argos have all three of theirs in Pete Shinnick's back pocket. But at this point, you're not calling any timeouts. You just let that beautiful clock keep rolling. Second down and seven. Ball at the 35 now. Reed with the snap, looking down the field. He's got Quentin Randolph middle of the field, and Q's got another catch. And it's another first down, Argos. And that's as easy as they come. Randolph, probably the easiest catch he's had tonight. Reed, the five-step drop, plenty of time in the pocket. And Randolph, what can you do with him tonight? Yeah, Q is a superstar tonight. There is no doubt about it. Give him a big connection there. Ball is inside the red zone down to the 17, 18 yards on that play as he continues to rack up the numbers. Argos back in the red zone once again. Looking to put another seven up on the board. Three receivers out to Reed's right. Johnson is the backfield 
in the backfield with him, a single over the other side is Karan Ashley. They'll go to Johnson on the run and play. He stretches the outside, makes the first man miss, makes the second guy. Now can't get, quite get past him, but he's going to pick up eight, maybe nine on the first down carry. A big run for Anthony Johnson, the junior. And nice job by Johnson. Going to the middle Ooh. initially, able to click it out to the outside. Stiff's arms, boy, the, de the defensive back coming up for the tackle and picks up about eight. He, he put a little dance. He put a little soul train on on Boyd on the outside right there. A little icky shuffle there by Johnson. They'll give him seven, I guess, when he went out of bounds. So second and three. Ball is at the nine. Argos can pick up a first down here this deep in the West Alabama end. So clock continues to roll. They'll go back to Johnson. Big hole. He's inside the five, and he's in for the touchdown. Anthony Johnson caps this drive with some punishing running. And what an exclamation point to the drive. Anthony Johnson, a lot of running room. You can see the inside or the, or the option handoff there to Johnson. And great blocking by the big boys out in front. Makes the first defender miss. Jeremiah Boyd again and gets in the end zone for six. Love to see this from Anthony Johnson. I mean, he and, he and Jaden Gardner with Shamari Mason out. Javon Newton out has really just picked up the slack. Been very good tonight with a passing game that's been sensational. And I know our friend Josh Sitton, who was in the booth with us, he's got two young kids. He said, I got to bail out at half and take them home because they go to bed at 645. The Argos may have just put the kids to bed here on West Alabama with that run. And that. And Williams good. bangs this one through. Big time kick up into the mezzanine level. And it's just like that. 48, 37. Argos. Back out on top in a big way. We'll take a break here with the two teams. Argos leading by 11 with a buck 34 to play here on the UWF Sports Network. You got me falling hard, sweet baby. You got me falling hard for you. It's you. I felt this way before. You know it's you. It's you. You got me. Here at CPC, you're not just a customer, you're part of the family. We operate seven offices throughout the Florida Gulf Coast and Alabama regions with nearly 100 employees to best serve you, the customer. So thank you to all of the thousands of businesses who have helped to make us a leader in the office technology industry for more than 45 years. We will continue to provide a level of service that can't be copied and look forward to the bright future that lies ahead for our communities, cities, and country. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. We're back here, Blue Wahoo Stadium. I think the crowd's feeling a little more comfortable. Jamie and I have caught our breath. There's your drive summary. Eight plays, 75 yards, 434 off the clock. That's exactly what, Jamie, you were talking about. Give me that four to five minute drive, eat some clock up, put seven on the board, and you pretty much take control of this game. Yeah, nice drive there by UWF that time. I mean, Johnson. Put the, put the exclamation point on the end, but Reed also had a couple of nice runs on that drive too. And a couple of cue catches, and may, everybody getting involved there. Nine-yard touchdown run to cap it for Anthony Johnson as he looked tremendous on that. By the way, Quentin Randolph now eight catches, 171 yards and three touchdowns, a sensational game. Austin Reed now, at, this one goes into the end zone. Austin, Austin Williams punking one down there, and Austin Reed, 443 yards in those five touchdowns. Heck of a night for that kid. 72% completion. He's 28 of 39. What? I mean, redshirt freshman, Jamie. This kid, I mean, you're rolling in. You know, get the win here tonight. You're rolling into the playoffs, and you'll ride that hot hand a long way potentially. Yeah, and that's what we spoke about during, before the show. I mean, I spoke about jump-starting that offense and getting it ready for the postseason, and Austin Reed sure has done that, especially on the night when the defense has been kind of short-manned and struggled a little bit. 
I'd say 48 points is a good jump start, right? Feeling pretty good rolling into the postseason with that. Yeah, defensively has not been the kind of night we expected, but you're missing, again, Sherrod Oliver. You got a Josh Smiley out. You had DJ Artis tossed out in this game. I mean, it's been that kind of weird night, but they've done a nice job when they needed to of coming up with some big plays. We got a minute 34 left. West Alabama has two timeouts. Now, they've been pretty good offensively tonight as well. As, as we mentioned, it's been the bend but not break a couple times for this Argo defense. It's really kind of been the difference in this ball game with an 11-point spread now. But McDaniels has 284. Uh, McDan McDaniels, 284 yards and two touchdowns. He's had a good night, and then they've run the ball effectively. I'm looking down here. You've got three guys with 60-plus yards, including Martin at running back with 96. Or excuse me, 96 receiving. At running back, you've got 116 for Underwood. Smith with 65, and in battle, we've seen him bruised down near the goal line. So it's been off, a lot of fireworks offensively, Jamie, in this one, but you just want the victory when all is said and done. And you got to think that last drive took a lot out of West Alabama. Oh, the wind is out of the sails. McDaniels back to pass. Just keep the ball in front of you here, right? Make some tackles. Martin, though, able to get out of bounds after the gain on first down, and that'll stop the clock with 127. Yeah, if you can get the guy down in the field of play, you're helping yourself tremendously at this point. Yeah, West Alabama still has those two timeouts to work with. But, again, they'd have to score a touchdown. They'd have to onside kick, get the ball back, and, and I'm a guess if they score a touchdown that they're going to go for two because you're down 11. And that would set you up to with a potential field goal to tie the game. But that's all speculation because they don't have any of that yet. McDaniel's looking to throw. That ball is, oh, should have been picked off. What a great job of breaking on the pattern by – Givens, Demaria Givens, and he was he was actually where the receiver wanted to be. Yeah, Givens ran that route for him that time. Just hit him right in the oh, shoulder pad. Oh, yeah, he just didn't get his not hands able up to come up. Enough. Not he able knew. to come up with it that time. <laughs> just this, this a tough, tough break for him. He knew right away. Jamie, as a defender, you know right there I could have finished the ball game, right? You you know, that's one you know that's one game you over if I catch that's it. That's one you want, definitely. Big third down play here, third and three from the 32. Can the Argos come up with a stop here? Quick throw out there, and again, diving out of bounds after getting the first down yardage, so they'll move the chains first down. West Alabama, 116 left to play in this ballgame. Yeah, just a quick passing game that time to Salisbury, one of their uh, most important receivers tonight, who has about four or five catches now for over 50 yards. Yeah, Salisbury's been good. It's really been, you know, Martin over there, number eight, who had the previous catch. He's over 100 yards now, but they've, they've done a nice job of, of slinging the football around as McDaniels is now – Five yards short of 300 for the night. Let's see if he can get it here. He goes deep down the field. This is a big play, and it's thrown away out of bounds over Martin's head. That kind of reminded me of that North Greenville throw, and I, I don't like that. I don't like to think about those kind of things because the uniforms are even kind of similar color. It's yeah, weird. same colors there, too, <laughs> but uh, he slings it just out of reach of his receiver. I think that's Martin over there. Good he job of coverage over there. Marcus Clayton was all over that, though. So that brings up a second down, 10. 109 left, ball at the 36-yard line. West Alabama, though, running out of time. They really are. They're going to have to come up with something big here. They cannot afford to drive the field in the traditional sense. They're going to need a big play, and that means the, the defense can come. And, wow, McDaniels took a hit. Boyd takes a hit at the end of this play. Was that DeAnthony Bell? And, and that's what you can't have. Celebration after the hit, you're going to take an unsportsmanlike I actually think that's going to be on Boyd as he flung the ball at um, Bell at Ooh, the end Bell of Bell that. delivering. That's a good, clean hit right there. I think that's actually going to be a penalty on Boyd. I hope so because I don't see what DeAnthony did that would have drawn a penalty. Because Boyd flung the ball in, in Bell's face yeah. after that big hit. And, and he's still talking. And the, the officials have to get on this. Boyd is in the middle of the field throwing his hands out, talking to the defenders. The result of the play was the first down. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 18. 15-yard penalty will be first down. Losing his cool there. and That's, that's, that's going to be costly at the end of that play. Yeah, he threw the ball at him after Bell was celebrating, and that's within the rules, but you can't do that, even though there's nothing. He just fl flicked the ball at him, didn't throw it at him hard, but again, kind of a lack of discipline. And we get it. You're a big kid, <laughs> Mr. Boyd, but... <laughs> D'Anthony Bell brought the lumber to you. So here we go. That backs you up. And, again, precious seconds as the clock continues to roll after that. Under a minute to play. Here comes the pressure. Big hit on McDaniels. And he just has to chunk that out of bounds. How about Trent Archie getting to the quarterback there 
right as he was releasing the football. Yeah, and that was a late blitz, a zone blitz that Doolin, Coach Doolin brought on that play, and McDaniels just had to get rid of that ball. So that'll bring up a second and 10, but more importantly, under 50 seconds at 49 now left in the ball game. And, and Jamie, this is the thing defensively, when you know, and, and literally you hear this, you can kind of pin your ears back and come after the quarterback, they've got to come up with a huge play. And you know that, keep the ball in front of you and be aggressive if you're blitzing. Here comes some pressure again. Quick throw out, and that's going to be, if you can get him to the ground here, it's a big play, and it is. They're going to have to call a timeout with 41 seconds left on the clock after the short completion. It's got a, a third and long coming up. And if you're UWF at this point, if I'm one of these Argo defenders, just turn your back, get back to your side of the line of scrimmage. Don't talk anymore. Yeah, nice tackle there by yeah. David Richardson. Nice form tackle out in space. Forcing them to use that timeout. The only thing that can really hurt you here other than a big play is a penalty. You don't want to give up a 15-yarder for some kind of unsportsmanlike, and you know we've seen this tonight. West Alabama's attempting to draw them as much as possible, kind of jawing at these UWF players. Yeah, it's definitely been been a, uh, a feisty game up until this point. But, I mean, UWF, you know what you're playing for. This is, it's, a, it's a game that's in the bag most likely, and you're, and you're playing for a playoff spot right now. And you don't want to, you know, have to sit players – due to an uncostly or un, untimely, unsportsmanlike penalty. No, no, no doubt about that. By the way, with the five touchdowns tonight, I was just kind of looking at this, Austin Reed puts himself at 24 touchdowns against seven picks on the season, well over 2,000 yards at this point. What a, what a sensational year as a redshirt freshman for this kid, regardless of what happens here in the last 43 seconds. Just so impressed with the way he's played, and the Argos closing in on that eighth victory here in the regular season, which would be obviously a program record, a program mark for this team. Here you go, third and six. Here comes the pressure. They dump it to Martin in the middle of the field, but you get him on the ground here, it's big. He may get the first down, but as soon as he gets up there, unless they call the timeout, they haven't taken the timeout off the board for West Alabama, the, the previous play, but yeah, that boy. clock's gonna roll here as soon as they get these. In fact, there it goes. One timeout left for them. Yeah, one timeout left. 30 seconds left in this ball game and counting down. Time running out. They got to make something big happen here. They'll go over to the sideline. Martin tries to get out of bounds. He does eventually, I think, after making a guy or two miss, but you're at 20 seconds now. Yeah, and that's what they're trying to do, work that sideline. They have to save that timeout for, you know, a possible maybe maybe field goal try and that, then try and make that uh to get that onside kick yeah you're not quite there yet at the 49 yard line but i think you're you're at a 43 excuse me you're at a point where yeah if you get another 10 yards do you try one but even that you'd have to get a touchdown after the onside kick so i don't know at this point you're really in a no-win situation with 20 seconds here comes some pressure dumped in the middle and well martin can't catch it but i'm not quite sure that he wanted to at that point because he had two defenders around him and if he gets tackled there, that's close to the end of the game. Yeah, and that's probably better Martin didn't catch that ball on that crossing route. You can see it just hit his hands where it's supposed to be. It has been a wild one. We've got a 48-37 score with 16 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. West Alabama running out of time. The Argos closing in on victory number eight here this season. Eight and two and a chance to finish with a 7-1 and one conference mark. That'd be sensational. McDaniels pressured out. He's going to flick it to Underwood. Can't make the tackle. That's a big spin out. But with eight seconds left, he's down. They're going to have to call the timeout. And, yeah, I think you are going to see. I'm looking over to see if they're going to try to run out. Your field goal team at this point with seven seconds left as they'll get the first down and move the chains. But the ball is kind of right on the edge of that field goal range. He made a 39-yarder earlier in the game, did Trey Jackson. So can, you know, what, what's the play here, Jamie? I think you I, th I think you go ahead and try and get the touchdown, to be honest with you. I mean, because you're yeah. going to have to have. But you're not going to have any time. You may not even have any time left for an onside kick at this point unless you throw this into the end zone. And, frankly, from this distance at the 29, by the time you run a route, if you don't come up with a touchdown, that's probably it. So I don't know. I don't know. You, you really have no. It's, it's, I'm, it ain't over till it's over, but it's over, is what I'm saying. Yeah, Trey Jackson has a 26-yarder from really point-blank range. made a 39-yarder as well. It's been, it's been a crazy game. Been kind of wild all over the place in this one. Wild night. 
Actually, three field goals, right, for Trey Jackson. The 22-yarder, 26-yarder, 39-yarder. It's been those stops that are really kind of the difference in this game, an 11-point game. Yeah, all you have to do now is uh, I assume this is going to be a shot at the end zone. Yeah, you almost have to because you don't have any timeouts left. You're going to have to throw deep. So the Argos kind of spreading out here. Three-man rush. Dropping most of everyone else in the coverage. They kind of bring some pressure from the end, and they get some pressure up the middle. This one should be an interception, and it is. Henry Montgomery with it. He's got some room up the sideline. Do you keep rolling, or do you just kind of go down here? That's the ball game, folks. Turnover on the last play. Argonauts come up with the big win. 48-37 is the final damage here. How about that, Jamie Smith? 8-2 on the season, 7-1. You're going to the playoffs, boys. We'll find out tomorrow exactly where you're going to sit. We never really had a chance because it was kind of a weird start to this game with uh, some of the stuff that was going on. But, you know, you come into this week ranked sixth in the regional rankings, Jamie, so you've just solidified your, your playoff credentials. There's no doubt about that. Now the question becomes where might you be, where might you go, who might you play, those kind of things. Obviously probably lost your chance to host after losing at Valdosta last week, but what a valiant effort that was. But, you know, where does this committee want to send you at this point? Yeah, and I've seen – and we've seen crazier things in this uh, – on this playoff committee. I mean, a couple of years ago, we didn't even think we were going to the playoffs and ended up making it all the way to the national championship game. But uh, I've seen crazier things, but the, the thing that you can control and hang your hat on is UWF is a playoff team. And you know you're in, and it's just a matter of where you're going now. We came into this one ranked 22nd in the country – in the top 25, and as I mentioned, we were six right behind Carson Newman. So in front of us, Valdosta, number one team in the country, first in the regional rankings. Lenore Ryan, 10 0 out of the South Atlantic before today's action. Bowie State, win get Carson Newman. So probably if everybody won, you may stay where you are, but we'll have to see. Now there's a chance you could be sent outside of the region to play somebody maybe in Arkansas, or they could keep you in. I talked to Coach Shinnick during the week, just speculating. He thinks maybe Lenore Ryan might be. The destination of the first round up in Hickory, North Carolina, but we'll have to wait and see. We do have some stats to throw at you as they're playing the alma mater. We'll, we'll catch up with Coach Shinnick after the alma mater here in the end zone, a tradition here that Coach Shinnick is a big fan of. But there you see it, 443 yards of passing for Austin Reed. We go over 100 rushing. Anthony Johnson capping that off with the nine-yard touchdown run. I'll take 544 down there, Jamie, a total offense. The turnover was costly, but you end up forcing three as well, including right there at the end of the game. Not a bad night, obviously, overall. In fact, we get out gained in total offense, but not on the scoreboard, 48-37. What were your impressions of, of what you saw tonight, Jamie? I think you saw a night the offense really stepped up when the defense was having a rough go of it. Um, this is a game where you needed Austin Reed, and, uh, I mean, he came out and had a heck of a ball game, over 400, 443 yards passing. On a, night, on a night when that defense struggled, he came up and, 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 kind, of lead, and, finally, and kind of helped them and saved, his, and saved their backs tonight. Quentin Randolph, eight catches, a buck 71, three touchdowns, including a big 50-yarder. Karan Ashley, three catches for 63. Big night for him. Rodney Coates with a touchdown catch. Kenneth Chanel with a big touchdown catch. You needed guys. Kevin Grant knocked out of this one early with a shoulder injury. You're missing guys at running back. Shamari Mason, we lose that talented, dynamic freshman early on. But Anthony Johnson steps up, goes 13 carries, 48 yards, including the touchdown, you know, 44 yards, excuse me, net. Tough running for him. I know it wasn't kind of a, a dynamic game, but we'll take it. Let's go down to Brian Henry on the field. He is with Coach Shinnick after the big win. Coach, you uh, you had a moment there with a couple of your seniors. What uh, what did you say to them, and what do you feel about this senior class? No, amazing senior class. You know, we've got guys who came in and joined us for one year, uh, Kendrick Badley and uh, Ian Bush. Uh, they've been fantastic. And then we've got our fifth-year guys that have been with us, 10 of them, uh, who've been with us from the beginning, uh, and just a great foundation to build uh, for this program. Fourth year, go 8-2. and two. Go 5-0 and at home, opportunity to be in the playoffs. Uh, just a fantastic feeling. So thankful for them and all their hard work. 547 yards of, of total offense, 440 for Austin passing. How about Quentin Randolph's night with, with 171 and three touchdowns? What, what another senior? No, fantastic for Q. Came as a walk-on, persevered, uh, and now to have the night he had is just fantastic for him. Great tribute to our whole team. Uh, again, we're fired up for the opportunity to continue to play. 
Two years ago, I asked you if this team was a playoff team. You know this team's a playoff team. Good luck next week. Thank you. Back up to you, Will. Thank you, Brian. And wow, yeah, what a great feeling. I mean, I, I, Jamie, I'm kind of, I, I was kind of emotional up here in the last couple of seconds. I know for the coaching staff and, and these kids down there, wow, the, the, the energy that's running through this team. And they come out and they do what they had to do today, which was take care of their own business. They did. They did. And uh, it was a rough, a rough go of it at first. But, I mean, all you had to do was come out and get the W in the end. Now you got to get some guys healthy and uh, come back next week and see where we're seated and uh, take care of business next week. We're probably on the road next week. Anything's possible, but we'll see. What we hope for is that somewhere down the line we might get another home game here. Hasn't been a home playoff game here at Blue Wahoo Stadium. If that happens, we most likely will be on with you here on Your View, or Your View Florida and Cox Sports TV. We'd like to thank uh, Adam. Derek and the staff here for the fantastic day, job that they do, the camera work, the replays, all that good stuff. Uh, best in the business. Love working with them. Jamie, thanks to you. We'll be on the radio, of course, no matter what happens and where we are next week with ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 99.1 FM, WEBY, Milton, Pensacola. It has been a fantastic season, and it is not done yet. GoArgos.com is the place to be. Selection show is at 4 o'clock tomorrow. We're having a, a senior banquet, a football banquet here in town, and we're going to keep an eye on that. And uh, Check GoArgos.com to find out when and where. We know that they will be playing next week, this Argo football team. 8-2 and two again, 48-37 the final score. Thanks for watching. The postgame show continues on the radio right here on the UWF Sports Network.